Today, it's Commodore Pet Day, uh, because I got the printer for this thing, finally, and uh, I really want to try it out. So, uh, my only goal for today is to print on that printer, and that's it. Uh, but, we've, I've drug out everything for the pet, because I'm thinking I might do a, uh, a complete pet walkthrough slash guide video, and a refresher on how all of this actually, you know works would probably not be the worst thing um so i've got everything out here data set uh 80 50 uh the 20 no that's a 40 22 and then the 40 32 here so that is what we're going with uh the pit is indeed gpib and i have all the cables we need to connect all the things so uh yeah but here one and says a cute little pet and a line <laughs> Ordizo, thank you for the, uh, it's currently, oh, there it is. Thank you for the tier one sub and for 24 and three, 27 months there. Thank you, Ordizo. Uh, oh yeah, the GoPro is, uh, feeling like a 480i kind of day, so, oh well. Um, so yes. Okay. Um, let me catch up on chat here. Uh, bring your pet to work day, yeah. Let's see, we've been watch uh, dot code printed from the pet. Or no. C H E E R one hundred dot show some love to your commodore. Pet it dot end of line. <laughs> um, Clo, thank you for the hundred bits there. I do have an update on. Uh, we won't be doing dot code printing from this. The DPIs, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, but I have a minor update on that. So let me just show you this really quick. Uh, so this is what I was trying to do yesterday. Um, so I'm just gonna press the A button here, go in to run the game, all right, get in there, and I showed that I had the laser working. Uh, I had one objective that I wanted, and it was this. The ability to rotate the laser, uh, that can now be done. The player won't be able to do this, but it will be part of the boss's attacks. So uh, getting that done was a big deal, but yes, that is now possible in the uh, game. So uh, we will actually be using this computer today, but not for that stuff, so I'll go ahead and leave that there. So uh, back to all of this. So uh, let's see, if it's GPIB means it's also Linux, you can use Python, use pet peripherals. I, I don't know, I'm really not that interested in that stuff. 
The most exotic thing we may do today is that if we just like have everything work perfectly smoothly, I might drag out my HP GPIB printer or the thermal one there and try and connect it. But I gotta like really set the stage for how weird and complicated this particular era of stuff is. The drive for the Commodore PET includes BIOS extension ROMs that add new commands to the PET. So it's not just a GPIB drive. That's not how it works, just because it plugs in. It's the same thing as like a serial mouse. Well, I mean, those are kind of the, all the same. It's, just, it's not just plug and play. That's not how this stuff works. There's not like one shared command set. Even with the HP machines, there's a difference between the CS80 and the Amigo floppy drives. They don't speak the same protocol language. This is definitely not Amigo or CS80, so the HPs would have no idea how to communicate with it. So I doubt that the printers work on the same principle, but we may try that today. But I'm just saying, the GPIBness of this does not really matter. That just means that some of the cables aren't that difficult to get. So, but yes. Okay. Uh, there's Linux kernel driver Commodore, mainly be serial. So I, I don't know what that would entail. I'm going to guess it would have something to do with... Uh, uh, 1541 drives with the XA series cables that adapt that kind of stuff. Those are GPIB, quote unquote, but they're not. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't count those as that. A lot of people call them 488 drives, but they're really, really not. So, okay. Uh, I think that's it for now for getting into this. So, uh, the other thing I have here is the ADA 1450. Earth, is that? And we killed a pageant. And a line. <laughs> Hiram, thank you for the 100 bits there. Uh, this is the printer adapter that I did a video on. Uh, this is a really weird, cool little piece of hardware. So this actually goes uh, between the PET's GPIB port and a serial printer uh, to allow it to use that. And in the video I did about this, uh, I used an image writer uh, to print from the PET, which was really nice to be able to finally print from the pet but now i have an actual pet printer shouldn't need that so uh yeah but still cool to have this so i just grabbed all the pet stuff i had uh i also have a ridiculous amount of documentation now this has been accruing in the background uh so let me just uh let me get a space here and i'll actually go through what all is up here and we'll we'll start in this one piece at a time there is one more objective I have for today. I would like to image one of my pet discs again, but the correct way, because apparently they're 80 tracks. C-O-B-H-C-2015-S-I-Z-H-E-E-R 100 dot pet 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 dot hello Shelby. And a line. Cobb, thank you for the 100 bits. And the Starbucks up is tier 3 and says good afternoon, sir. And a line. Uh, oh, Dave Starbuck, thank you for the tier three sub holy moly and for 24 months there i very very much appreciate that thank you uh keyboard that does not suck is yet to be determined every single time i bring this thing back out the keyboard has failed in a new way so we'll see how that goes because the, the stream may evolve into keyboard repair we'll find out because just like every single time there's something wrong in the pcb in here anyway i wanted to look through the documentation i have so yeah. Uh, all right. That's very, very bright. That's better. All right. So I'm, I'm actually quite happy with some of the books that I've gotten recently for this thing. So first off is Pet and IEEE 488. So this is a programming guide on how to actually do this stuff. So an example here with using an HP multimeter uh, with the Pet. Um, so it's, there we go, an example of actual programming here. So we could figure out how to interface with uh, GPIB hardware. So that'll be cool. Uh, what camera? This is a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Uh, I would not call this a good camera to go for if you just are starting out for streaming. This is a, you know what you're doing with camera. So. Uh, first book in archive.org. I imagine most of, if not all of these are. Um, there's not a lot of unusual things here. I also have uh, two of the Commodore PET introductory books. These are D 
different. These are more for the 2001 series, as is some of the other documentation that I have, uh, but it mostly transfers over. So I'll be able to have some reference material for using the pet here, because it's, it's kind of been a while. <laughs> Can we please play some pet robots? Uh, no, <laughs> we won't be doing that. But thank you for the 100 bits. Yeah, um, we're going to try this stuff. I just realized this pet communication in the outside world probably, yeah, 488, again, I hadn't really considered these are roughly the same. But these are kind of the better pair to have. So this is the Adam Osborne. You heard of that guy. C-O-V-A-C-2015-S-I-C-H-E-E-R-100-2-2-2. Chugga-chugga-wow. And a line. Cobb, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, so this is the big bad uh, Commodore pet like user's guide type thing. This is pretty much everything you could ever want in a book on how to use the pet. So that may be a, a big one there. Then we have the original Early Commodore -E pet. C H E E R one hundred. Can we please play some kind of game on the pet? And a line. Hiram, we'll see. Um, thank you for the hundred bits, but the pet's not really like a gaming computer. <laughs> but I will say. There's a game for the pet, so maybe. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is the original pet user's manual. Um, it's a little thick for one of these kinds of uh, books, but uh, yep. I've not actually looked through this all that much, so I'm kind of going to lean on this one, I think, if we're going to look into stuff. And, oh, that's, what is this? Hold on. There's some other things in this Aljumet says, Z -A -G -E -R, set. Uh, 100. Can we please write a big all budgeting and financial forecasting spreadsheet on the pet? <laughs> and a line. <laughs> Thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> huh. I don't... I don't know what this document is. Um, conversion chart. Old new ROMs. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. This doesn't look... Like, like there's personal information. Some kind of programming document. Um, I think I skipped over it in the beginning. Someone has written a lot in here. Hopefully there's no addresses or phone numbers here. Um, I love this. Do not poke 5945862. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the killer poke right there. They're saying, don't do that. We'll do that today. Don't worry. Um, that's amazing. Especially on a 2001. That's fine. Um, oh, that's hilarious. I didn't have this book when I did that video. That would have been amazing to be able to show this. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, I love all the handwritten stuff here. Um, that's great. Yeah, I think the rest of it might be fine. Ooh, first edition 1978. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, that is the original pet manual. Um, then we have... The printer manual. This is for the 2022 and the 2023, which is a coincidence. Um, the printer I have is the 4022. Um, so this isn't quite the same, but it should be pretty good in telling us how to print, uh, just so that we know like what the commands are. I really <laughs> I want the 2022 so bad um i would accept the 2023 i almost bought one of these but i think i'm gonna hold out for the 2022 these are built the same way as the pet chassis and the floppy drive are it's a metal shell that clamps down on a box the 4022 i have here is an epson mx80 that actually makes it really boring but it's also the best way to go unless this uses a universal uh typewriter spool oh it does I want, I want, I, I want. <laughs> I didn't know those were so easy to use. Oh, it's a typewriter spool. Dang it. Well, I'm not kidding. A week after I bought the 4022, the 2023 showed up on eBay and I was like, I'm just going to hold off. I probably shouldn't buy two Commodore pet printers like right after one after another. Had I, had I, had I known that it used universal two inch typewriter ribbons? We'd have two printers sitting here right now. Oh, drat. <laughs> oh, well. Just means that I'll have to, you know, keep looking. Anyway, this should tell us how, how to actually do 
print commands. Um, so using the printer, here we go. Open, number five, hello there, close. That's the kind of thing that we're gonna need. Um, you can't really see that. There you go. So those are the kinds of commands we're gonna be able to reference from this documentation uh, and why it's gonna be nice to have this stuff. So we'll just be able to look there and see. Okay. All of the hardware is GPIB, uh, Hiram. So, see ribbon for the DMP 100 probably fits. Uh, it, it's just a typewriter ribbon. Fit completely 100% generic. All right, then we have the pet machine language guide. Uh, if you wanted to do, well, that's not assembly. <laughs> I assume this would be assembly. There we go, that's assembly. Uh, so yeah, if we ever wanted to do assembly, no, um, then we could use this. Um, or we could use this, which is like an updated version. I'm not exactly sure, let's see. Um, is there a revision number here? What is this, hello? Oh, that's kind of cool. Vigil is a new language uh, for programming interactive. Dude, why did they print this on red paper? Were they trying to make it impossible to copy or something? Also that pet artwork, that's just delightful there. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, yeah, but why wouldn't they want you copying this? The book itself isn't printed on red. It's their pamphlet for like buying things. Why would you not want that copy? That's strange. But yeah, um, interesting. Okay, this is actually, this is kind of cool. I was wondering about this. So Vigil for cassette, Vigil diskette. So it was available on a floppy disk. Interesting, I was wondering how much software was only distributed on cassettes uh, for the pet because let's be real, the pet had a very limited shelf life. Um, and <laughs> the drives are all very different. So the cassette was kind of like the one true standard that could be agreed upon for software distribution. So I'm kind of impressed that they have any discs uh, available for sale. So Pascal, whoa, that's super cool. Yeah, that's that's wild. Um, was there an information about uh, copyright 1979? Okay, is there? Updated version here, 1979, 1981, 7th printing. Here we go. So there, there is the difference in revision. So two years and I guess six different editions. Good grief. So yeah, um, this goes in this one, I guess. Interesting. All right. And then last, the pet revealed um, by Nick Hampshire, I guess. I have no idea what this is. I'm gonna guess this is like a generic book that was meant to just catch nerds. Um, Cause I feel like there's probably, all of this stuff is covered in the same areas. Actually, I really hate this book. That's, yeah, no, that's kinda really super duper boring. What on earth is all this? The pet operating system, what? Oh, it's a, that's a memory map. Okay, that's interesting. Which video do I have an X5 Gen 2? It's in the other room. I use it every day. <laughs> huh. This is interesting. This is in the Adam Osborne book as well, um, in a much better table. So you wouldn't really need this, but I guess if they wanted to compete with it. Use report, okay. Does this, yep, it immediately gets to the pinout, so that's good, okay. How about the, uh, oh, getting better there. Video output circuitry. Wait a minute, are they saying how to get video out of the pet? The only other lines of interest on, uh, the top surface, the user port connector, line six, seven, and eight. These are all associated with the operation of the two cassettes. No, 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 not cassettes. I want video. Um, parallel port. 
I do know it's possible to somehow get video out of, I believe, the user port. Yeah. So, interesting. That would be... That'd be kind of cool. I don't. I doubt I have all the chips to do this stuff here, but uh, yeah, that, that is a thing I wouldn't mind doing someday. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's cool to see a video out mod <laughs> listed. I wonder if it has like the. Well, there shouldn't be need to be a speaker mod. Oh, handwritten notes. Oh, it's got the garbage keyboard. Eh. Oh well. Interesting. I wonder if this covers the killer poke. Because it seems like it's covering hidden pokes here. That triple E8 port, no. But then disable keyboard? What? The keyboard, okay. Oh, is the pet architecturally all GPIB internally? I didn't know if, I don't know if that's the case. That would be kind of nice. Let's see, it feel X1. I don't know what the X1 is. Uh, I'm not a fan of any of the touchscreen ones. I really like the feel for being dedicated hardware. I don't really, I don't want it to just be an amp. Hmm. Well, I kind of hope this book covers the killer poke. That would be amazing. Uh, based on the age, it would cover it as the speed up and this is exactly the kind of book that I would expect to cover this uh, in a positive way remote enable interface clear device clear okay come on well that's all GPIB stuff still come on you gotta have like a tips and tricks secrets of thingamajigs video display okay uh one virtue of the pads video display is flexibility imparted by memory mapped design okay most users will have poke uh between there and there okay oh we're getting close for <laughs> we're getting real close um i believe that's not quite the address so Four five eight six two, so that's four six eight. Are we gonna get the killer poke recommended? Oh my gosh! Please do it. Please recommend the killer poke. X one is iPod. Okay, cool. So is my X five Gen two. Yeah, those are nice. Okay, come on, give me the killer poke. Please recommend the killer poke. Oh gosh, please do it. Please. Not seeing it. Is it all program listing from here on out? Was that schematics? What kind of book reverse engineers something that sell you the schematics? Like, I couldn't go buy an iPhone and then reverse engineer how it's put together and then sell that. that would, Apple would murder me. Like, <laughs> what? I wonder how this compares to the other listed schematics. No, this is not normal for the time. This did not come with the pet. This is a third-party book. This would be like going and buying an NES and then publishing your own book about how it's put together. This is not normal. That's weird. I could see it. I could see them being in the back of this manual because this is the official Commodore manual. This is not. Only such black elk option people they really like, yeah. <laughs> I still kind of want to go through this whole video memory poke section a little bit more closely here. I would, I will, I will be so happy if this tells you to do the killer poke. Oh man, that would be amazing. All right, come on.
Okay. Uh, poke five. There's a third very important connection between the character generation, display hardware, and the processor. 68 hertz, yada yada. Okay. Uh, bottom of the screen, private flyback. It is during the flyback period that the screen is blinked and the display updated. The retrace interrupt can be disabled, allowing the programmer to disable the keyboard. Also, code can be inserted in the interrupt routines. They're close. They're so close to talking about the killer poke. So, for those of you who don't know, you haven't watched my video about the killer poke. Uh, what the killer poke actually does is on a PET 2001, not a 4032, on a PET 2001, the killer poke allows you to write to the video memory while it is being drawn to the display. Normally, you are only permitted to write to the video memory during the vertical retrace. That is where the beam of the CRT goes back up to the top. Uh, and that makes it so that you cannot draw as frequently to the display as you theoretically could. So the killer poke makes it so that the line that goes high and low to disable the right access to the video RAM is permanently set to allow access. And you can write to the video memory while it's being read by the computer. On the 4032 and later machines that use the universal PET board, what it does is it actually changes the vertical deflection uh, circuit. It's used as part of the video blinking line, if I remember correctly. So what happens if you write the killer poke on this machine, it actually compresses the video horizontal or vertically um, in a way that is not great for the machine, but there have been no reported cases of it ever actually killing a pet. That's a complete a uh, fictitious thing that has never happened. Um, and the reality is, is it's so slow on the pet that you would have to want to kill your pet with it. I doubt it's ever actually damaged anything. Uh, it does turn out though, that driving the pin on the original pets, the 2001s like that, might burn it out uh, cause it's not current limited. Uh, so it pulls too much current. Uh, so it's actually worse on the original pets than it is on this one. Uh, because this one doesn't use the pin in the same way, so it's more difficult for it to pull current out than the uh, 2001s. But on the 2001s, it was a noticeable speed up. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Let's see. Uh, you can as long as you can copy their schematics directly, free to make their own schematics for a product. Yeah, but doing that and selling them feels a little different. I don't know. There is the matter-of-fact law. You cannot copyright things that are a matter-of-fact, but... I have a feeling if this was taken to court, <laughs> they would lose. <laughs> yeah, so far I'm not seeing the killer poke address being mentioned in the book. But at the time that this would have been written, it would have been a speed boost to those machines. But it doesn't seem like it was either known at this point, or the author didn't want to recommend it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing it anywhere. That's a shame. That would have been amazing to have a physical copy of someone recommending the killer poke. Oh, well. All right. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to power up the pet and make sure the keyboard's still happy. Because uh, <laughs> it's, it's very flaky. Uh, the problem with the pet keyboard is that it has a mix of actual car copper traces on the top side only, and then it has carbon pads on top of that, that bridge between uh, copper traces, because they were too cheap to make an actual dual side PCB or two sided PCB, but they still needed two sides. I, I don't know why they did it. It's very dumb. Uh, one of these days I should really like just make a new PCB that's properly double sided with Vs and stuff. Um, and then you could just replace it have your original keyboard work without having to do stupid workarounds. Yeah. But on the other hand, it would kind of be nice to make uh, a Cherry MX Switch compatible one and then come up with a design for stem replacements to allow you to use the original keys. So, I don't know. Let's see, uh, you just, uh, let's see, the fact that you have a PCB with copper traces and just draw, <laughs> you have a PCB with copper traces and you just drawn out those copper traces, yes. I did that with the CD-ROM interface, yes, but I did not sell that schematic. <laughs> That's the thing. They sold that book. They copied someone else's thing and then sold it. That's the problem, I think. So anyway, uh, <laughs> that, that's hilarious, old master. I did not know that. So 
Uh, is that worse than fo foam and foil switch? No, foam and foil is the absolute worst thing in the history of keyboards of all time. It will never be taught. The, the problem with this is different. Um, and I'm not sure if it's systemic or maybe mine just had something heavy on top of the keyboard for a long time because it was not stored in a very nice way. So, I don't know. See, today, schematics are uh, commonplace, copyright IP reception, never really cared about. Orientation. Yeah. Let me, let me see. Does the original pet manual come with it? Let's look at that. The original pet manual does not have schematics. So, it's not information that was intended to be distributed. I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm only weirded out by it because it was being sold. That's it. Anyway, uh, let's get this thing fired up. I'm all fancy. I have power cables ready to go here. Uh, so let's plug this in. This might turn on. Nope. Okay. I, I have it actually switched off. All right. I am amazed that this camera actually focused on it because I have it pointed straight at the CRT. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's good sounds. Oh, this is just the best computer, man. This thing rocks. <laughs> okay, uh, let's start out with a simple keyboard test. That's a little funky. That feels more like a carbon pad problem than a carbon trace problem. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let this line wrap. OK, next. Dude, the pet keyboard is so terrible. Why? That also feels like a, yeah, that sorted itself out. Okay, that's carbon pad. How about this one? Wish the pet wasn't so terrible. <laughs> okay. Are you kidding me? Are they all going to be like this? I don't want to have to exercise every key this much. I thought I had solved the carbon pad issue with my pad. Yeah, see, that one's just fantastic. That's not even slightly an issue. And then that one's good. All right, well, that's the whole top row. <sighs> All right, I don't know what off RBS does. Well, that one works. Oh, it's reverse. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Okay, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, R. Every time a key doesn't work right, I'm going to do a full row. Come on. Uh-oh. There we go. Wake up. You know, they're kind of all in the same spot. 
Oh, wake it up. There it goes. Come on. Hey. Kinda. It, it's coming back to life. Give it a shot. I'm, I'm going two rows on this one. This one sucks. There we go. It's almost reliable. This is terrible. Okay. It's only buttons around the middle. I wonder if I don't have it like fully tightened down. Okay, I actually have a screw on the right side. Let's open it and make sure that the keyboard's fully assembled. Uh, Waffle Cat, we kind of do a lot of different things related to computers and technology. Uh, so right now, we are kind of just uh, reacquainting, well, I am reacquainting myself uh, with my Commodore PET computer here uh, and trying to assess what shape everything's in. Oh, I forgot that mine has like a metal shroud thing on there. That's complicated. Okay. Um, I need to get that off. And then I want to just check that all the screws are actually fully tightened on the machine or on the keyboard. Because something seems a little weird with it. <laughs> Another opportunity to hate on Commodore. You know, generally, the PET is my favorite Commodore computer, and I love it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't love me back. <laughs> all right, screw sorter. Nice cap. It is actually a pretty cool giant green cap. Wow, there's a lot of dust in there for something I have fully cleaned out before. What do I have taped down here? Why is there a screw right there? Oh, if I remember correctly, this hole is uh, bad. I'm actually going to mark that with a Sharpie this time. So I don't try and put a screw back in there. that you know I immediately regret having put the mark on there I wish I had just put tape over the hole I don't like making permanent marks on my devices oh well I swear every single time I touch the pet, I have to take out the keyboard for one reason or another. I, I genuinely cannot remember the last time I've attempted to use this thing where I didn't have to take the keyboard out. It's, it's eternal, the pet keyboard issues. If I remember correctly, this part here that I'm about to take off uh, is completely optional and not even every pet has it. Oh gosh, there's one more screw. Oh, no, my keyboard is attached to this. Never mind. Boat? CPU? Oh, Uh, all right look at the bottom side so it would be like these three screws here that would be loose if that is my issue uh, one of the nice things about my pet is that it has a strangely long keyboard cable not all of them do so you can actually just pull this out and mess with it Outside of the computer. What did I just see moving around on there? Weird. Okay. Do we have any cans of compressed air? I have an air compressor. 
This is more of a candidate for ESD vacuum though, but I don't know that we're, I don't think we're gonna try that today. Okay. Now I just wanna make sure those are all tight first here. So let me press a button and turn off the camera. That was weird. I think the switch was in the off position, but it was on. Strange. Okay. Uh, that's a capacitor in there, that green thing. Okay. That is not the right size screw. <laughs> 65 ohms. You guys are weird. Uh, That's a tri wing. Oh, this was a tri wing too. Weird. Okay. Um, need a medium size Phillips. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Nice and tight there. Every key that's been a problem has been like right there. So let's try this again now. See what we can get to cooperate. Ah. Uh, also, the pot for the video brightness on mine is a little wonky. Where is it? There it is. Hey, there it's. Ah. <laughs> Pay no attention. All right. K L up or colon all right well it still wants to be a pain in the butt how about the other ones that i already kind of massaged no not really yeah that that's good okay this one we're this close we could just take off the keyboard pcb and see if it needs clean it's not that many screws. I've already desoldered the the caps lock thing. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't do uh, commissioned repairs. Sorry. It's just too much to do or risk and all that stuff. And I have my own things going on. Sorry. <sighs> Taking apart that keyboard once again. Literally every time I use it. Looks like you didn't clean the keyboard last time you opened it. I swear I did have to do something to it. I'm pretty sure the last time I used this was right before I moved into the office and that's when I made the copper tape repair video. So, yeah. <laughs> this is his favorite Commodore. It is, yes. This is the most reliable Commodore I own. You have to desolder the caps lock. It's already been done. I, I did that years ago and I've never put it back because I just don't care. I have to get in and out of this thing too much anyway. It's not worth having it desoldered. I should just put a quick disconnect in there. Uh, is there a wire for every key? No, 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 no. These only go to uh, if you're talking about this, no, it has rows and columns. Um, I actually have a code uh, program on GitHub uh, that you can get a Teensy and plug it into the other end of this cable and it will uh, convert the rows and columns into a USB keyboard for you so you can test a keyboard like this. Makes it really easy to uh, verify which key contacts are clean. It would take me too long to try and get that set back up again today though because I don't have the Teensy development environment set up and all that stuff, so I don't want to deal with that. We'll just look at this, see how bad it is, but yeah. So, yeah, caps lock is a physical different switch with wires. How 
How can you yell at a machine without caps lock? You, you notice that it was already all caps, right? <laughs> it's only lowercase in other times. Um, hmm. Perhaps I didn't do what I thought I did. Yeah, okay. Well, I know how we can fix this. We're, we're going to spend a lot of time on this today, I suspect. So, uh, no, it's not the other side. At least I don't think it's the other side. Um, no, that frankly looks perfect. So, let me show you what I have going on down here. You'll notice there are two different colors of carbon pads. There are black carbon pads and there are silver carbon pads. The silver ones have graphite on them uh, and that is pure graphite from a pencil. The black ones are untouched. I thought I graphited all the keys. I apparently did not. Um, no, not painted. I think the idea of painting these is stupid. Paint hardens. Why Why would you want something hard on there? So I, that's just straight up carbon dust stuck to it. It's not, it's not hard at all. Um, but I really thought I did it to all of the keys. And I very, very clearly did not. Um, do we do this? Do we... Do we graphite all the keys? I think we have to if I want it to actually work. I don't remember how this comes apart, if it's easy. It's not. <laughs> uh, now that one won't go back in. Um, so yeah, the way the pet keyboard works, at least mine, uh, the key cap has a, a shaft that goes down into the key plunger uh, and then there is a spring between the cap and the base plate uh, that pushes it back up so it's a three-part switch mechanism could the graphite have come off no no it's way way too clean it's got to be but i just didn't do it Get back down there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hmm. It's like a classic pick a computer episode in a way, but I actually wanted to use this, so. How does the graphite stay in place? The rubber pad is stickier than you think. And it actually works pretty well. So. Uh, Orbital, hello. Uh, welcome here. It's being your first time live. It looks like we're doing a classic project of repairing a Commodore PET keyboard. Yay! <laughs> what would a trace pen do? I don't know what a trace pen is, so I can't say. All right, that has not a lot of lead in it. That one's got a bunch. All right. Uh, um, let me get my keycap puller. I guess we're doing this. I really didn't want to do this today. This is going to take a long time. And I already have this coming up as a project to do for something else anyway. And I really didn't want to have to do it like six times. Is this a keycap puller? I think it is. No, it's not. That is, though. All right. No, we don't need anything fancy. We literally just need a pencil. That's that's all it takes. A pencil and a sheet of paper. That's all you need to repair uh, pads. That's it. I will demonstrate how uh, here in a moment. All right. Here's our sheet of paper and a pencil. But I would recommend 
removing the plungers to do this. So this is a pain in the butt. We're gonna start here since this is one of the problematic ones and we're just gonna work our way over. Pro tip, just, just don't with vintage computers. Oh, what's going on? Did you guys hear the deck talk okay? Because for me, that was real weird sounding. Uh, and Nesreal, thank you for the tier one sub. You did not hear it. Very low. Okay, what happened? Uh, uh, no, the deck talk was there. It was just very quiet, like an electrical issue. Because, you know, we needed more things to diagnose today. One moment. What's going on? This is the Deck Talk speaking. End of line. There we go. Okay, the cable got bumped, I guess, and it was annoying because the quarter inch to RCA adapters were all terrible. All right, I'm going to put all the documentation off to the side here. All right. Um, Ness, thank you. C-O-P-H-C, 2015 S-I-C-H-E-E-R, 100 Deck Talk test. End of line. Nesriel, thank you for the 22 months there. I very much appreciate that. Uh, all right. Let's continue. We're going to pull off. I feel like this one was a pain in the butt. Actually, maybe we should start here. All right. We're doing one key at a time because I don't want to mix these up. Okay, so you slide out the plunger, all right? So we now have just this. So this is just the white plunger and then we have the rubber membrane that is integrated into it. So this bends down on top of here. That's your actuation. Actually, that's your sensation that you have reached the bottom. That's what that presses against. So how do we coat that in graphite? Well, we have a sheet of paper, and we have a pencil, and all we do is draw a ridiculously deep, dark circle. That's it. All right, that ends up scratching off enough graphite from the pencil lead that you can then rub this on there and you can coat the plunger in that. You can see it's now silver. So uh, I'm just going to be doing this now <laughs> for all the bad keys. Yep, there you are, silver. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. Um, do not recommend, but uh, I also recommend it because it'll work. Put some music on? No, there's there's no, that's not how music works on here. I mean, I don't have a, like a license with someone to have. Uh, Copyright free, royalty free music, however you want to think about it. All right. So there's that one. And then we put the spring on. And then we put the cap on. And boom, that one's done. And you can very clearly see the difference between the one that I've done and the ones that I have not. Uh, 
next key. And the next plunger. Uh, for those of you who are asking about the music, no, we're, we're not going to do music. <laughs> it's just not happening. If, if you think it's that easy to find music, then you don't understand how copyright law works. <laughs> and the second audio track on Twitch, also not an acceptable solution. I would take a wooden pencil and use a knife to extract graphite. That would actually probably work too. Um, the main benefit to this is that uh, since it's a mechanical pencil, I have uh, nothing physically changes about the pencil as I do this procedure. So it's pretty easily repeatable. This does suck tremendously though. So uh, yeah. I don't know what's the better view here, the wider view of me doing each individual part or the tighter shot of this stuff. Probably the wider view so you could actually get an idea of progress and what's going on. I don't think we're going to do every key. I think I'm just going to do this kind of grouping over here where there being a problem right now. Because every key is just going to take forever. And that's crap. Why I'm having to do this yet again, because every time I do this I refuse to do every single key. <laughs> Uh. Is it not possible to rub the paper? No, it isn't actually, because the whole reason this works is that the graphite is sitting loose on top. So if I turned it upside down, the graphite would just kind of fall off. Yeah, well, that one didn't even need the keycap puller. I was just able to manually yoink it. Uh, how long does this solution usually last? Well, all of the keys I've already done still work. I just haven't done all the keys. I'm sure there are all sorts of ways to optimize this process, but this is a way I can do right now. Nothing is going to be faster than the things that I have in this office at this moment. JSLIM 79 sub as prime and says end of line. AJ Slim 79, thank you for the prime sub. And for 21, that's a 16 and a 4 and a 1. 21 months there, thank you. Looking forward to test your four pets you got a month ago? Good luck. You're probably going to have to do this. Wow. Well. And yet, you can't just uh, rub on the pad either for several reasons. Uh, you don't get enough of it rubbing off because the graphite is harder than the rubber. And you can't uh, put uh, pressure on it because you'll just tear the rubber pad. So it has to come off. Uh, ideally, without breaking it. Or dropping it on the ground. That would, that would be cool too. I don't like the painting because painting is hard. 
like literally physically it makes it hard paint dries and then becomes a solid the graphite is going to be a powder on the surface so in effect it's a fluid Additionally, I know I can take the graphite off if I want to, and I prefer not to make irreversible changes to my vintage hardware. And I know this works, so why, why mess with success? The time I've been talking about this, I've already done four pads, by the way. Graphite's also a lubricant. It is, yes. Uh, it is the lubricant you should be using on locks. So if you've ever had a lock that felt jammed up, use graphite. Do not put oil in it. Oil will ruin the lock. more on here. Shows grinding of a pencil and using a straw to blow it into the lock mechanism. That's hilarious. That is genuinely hilarious. You can just get powdered graphite. <laughs> Use. That comes in a little blower tube thing. But that's amazing. <laughs> uh, I would not put... Uh, graphite powder in an alcohol solution and then rub it on here either because alcohol is an oxidizer and it won't do good things to the rubber pads <laughs> there, there is a reason that i am doing it this horribly stupid complicated way <sighs> and it's because there are just there's a lot of things to consider Am I testing the 2200 cap later? Uh, no, mine's good. Um, I have used my pet enough that I'm not concerned about reforming it. And I got my pet before I had my reforming set up. So I did not reform it. Now I would. I would absolutely recommend reforming that cap. Uh, we will be opening my printer as well and seeing if we need to reform anything on it before we continue. We're going to test the printer after we get this sorted. But yeah, uh, while I would recommend reforming this one, I will say I did not. <sighs> it's frustrating when the horribly complicated, stupid way is the best way. <laughs> See, the used to use graphite lubricant inside of uh, the tip. Is that the the metal sphere that goes on the end of the fencing? I don't know. Is it called a sword? I, I don't. I don't. I don't know that much about fencing. I'm going to do the four keys to uh, on the right side of the main alpha grid area. And then we're going to call it done. So I am one. Actually, I'm halfway done already because I'm going to skip the empty spots. So, yeah, we're, we're halfway done with this part. All right. Could reform the cat while I'm pencing my keys. I just had the computer on. <laughs> The cap is reformed. <laughs> I 
And again, I've used the computer enough that I'm not concerned about it. I've had uh, a number of people comment on uh, videos and places, and they're surprised to hear that it's actually a very good idea to pull out your computers and use them every now and then. And same thing with game consoles too. Just all your vintage electronics, actually using them like a car where you keep all the fluids topped off and flowed, uh, flowed through the uh, tubes and pipes and hoses and all that stuff. Uh, it's a good idea to do that with your computers too, although it's not, well, you know, unless you've got water-cooled G5 or something. Uh, it's a good idea to run them and exercise the components as well. I guess it is actually wet parts in the computer. It's the caps that are the problem. It's just stupid wet things that need to be run every now and then. Yeah, the enter key might be an important one to make work. Didn't test if it doesn't work, but since this whole group of them over here it seems to want to be a problem today, let's just go ahead and assume it doesn't. Oh gosh, that is weird. It's at a very strange angle. Is there a post thing? No, it's just offset. That's weird. Uh, so AJ Slim, yes, but don't expect the peripherals to work interchangeably. It's not a protocol, it's an interface. Think of it like sending a letter. You can send a letter in Spanish and English and Japanese or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's whether or not the contents of the letter are understood on the other end. And the contents of the drive protocol for a Commodore PET compared to an HP will not be understood by each other. So that kind of stuff is not interchangeable, but the raw peripheral connections are the same after you get off the back of the motherboard. Commodore PET's really stupid and has a card edge connector for the Jeep at the port because they were too cheap to put a Centronics connector on there. That's about my only complaint about the PET from a design perspective, is that they didn't just put a straight up G-PIP port on there. Can't you move to Alaska? <laughs> the internet is better. You know what else is in Alaska? A lot of humidity. Don't really want that. Yeah, yeah, and my preference for picking up stuff locally, yes. <laughs> I can't even imagine how bad the pickings are there. Yeah, because those of you who don't know, um, almost every single thing I have in my collection was acquired locally. Um, and if it has a CRT in it, there's like a 99% chance it was a local purchase. Because I don't like shipping complicated things. They always end up broken. the other fun thing you know, people are saying like oh you should play music during this when I'm doing this kind of a thing for a video I can't play music because <laughs> generally I mean I could wear headphones I don't know why I never wear headphones but I just I don't when I'm filming ship 17 inch CRT survive your brain
Uh, time lapse it sometimes, but generally I still use the audio for the time lapse as well. Although I think people, I don't really, I'm not sure what people want for that kind of thing. I don't understand how to edit music into that because I don't really want music in all my videos. So it's difficult for me to swap that audio out for music because it's going to be five seconds or 20 seconds of uh, fast forward. And then I don't want music because I don't like how people use music in videos. I don't want a minute and a half of random music while things just happen in the background. Like it's, I know it's show don't tell is the general concept of video production, but I don't like the stand back, be silent, just run music for a section of the video. It just drives me nuts. So I, I don't know. Oh, Ben, your comment about the hair and humidity. Uh, yes, that's true. Um, I will say there is a direct reason I live in Arizona because of that, um, as at least partly. But uh, more that uh, nothing rusts here because of the humidity. So, yeah. Rust just does not exist here, just straight up. until it rains. It does not rain frequently enough and the air is dry enough that it evaporates so fast. It you just you don't get rust here. You get a little minor surface rust, but you do not get corrosion metal destroying rust. Shift key is very strange. Okay, two more keys and then we're going to call this and test it again. <laughs> Ellen Croft, I have no idea what that's like to deal with. Definitely not. Nope. <laughs> One of these days we're going to do a stream where we just take out the pet and we're going to do every single key. And it's going to be the most exciting stream ever. Just watch. This is why I need to finish that key AT project so you guys can run a real DOS computer. You guys could be playing Oregon Trail on a computer while I do this. We need to get that done. We might need to be away that weekend. <laughs> uh, hey, it hasn't been that long. It's only been an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's fine. What are, you, what are you talking about? This is going so fast. Uh... Okay, last one. And then we'll test it, see which other ones we may need to do. Hopefully none. All right, there we go.
This is just the joys of maintaining vintage equipment. I'm just going to say. Sometimes you have to do the boring thing that takes a long time. This is the difference between a live and an edited video. You, you have to sit here with me as I go through this monotony. Uh, all right. Put the PCB back on. Uh, what mic is being used? Uh, it's a... Oh my gosh, I can't remember what the thing is. It's terrible. You don't want it. It's just, it's bad. I know it's bad. Don't worry about it. It's a horrible mic that no one should buy. My wireless mic pack's batteries just exploded, though, so I can't actually use them anymore. Uh, and Jason, yes, my second to last video is actually about using uh, the first optical mouse on a PC with an 8088 in it. Uh, no, I don't actually, I genuinely will not get any pinball machines. I, I don't want any. <laughs> An actual shotgun mic? Yeah. Mic pack repair stream when? So, here's what I'm considering, okay? I'm considering getting a, a shotgun mic or something that doesn't totally suck and replacing that one. And then... Just getting the batteries for my road mics for the handful of times where I actually need to be mobile. Uh, and then setting up a better mic solution here. Uh, so I don't need to wear a mic because it's kind of actually really nice to not wear a mic. So <laughs> I'm leaning towards that option. Uh, and then, yeah, just replace the batteries, which is nothing. It's not worth filming. So many tiny screws. Eh. You know what? I can probably skip some. We can just find out if this works now. I'll put all the ones on that side that we need. Okay. Connector. Okay. Uh, what's going on there? Well, hopefully that's fine. All right. All right. Let's find out how much an improvement we made, and if this doesn't work, then I just flip it over and I put the rest of the screws in. Uh, is the Apple Lisa in my bucket list? No, it's in the other room over there. <laughs> okay. Eh? Oh, that's just that's way better. Yep. Golden. Beautiful, perfect, flawless, without error, fully functional. Oh yeah, that's just solved. And this is why graphite rules. This is perfect. No issues other than that one, but that's probably because it wasn't. Why is comma not working? That might be an alignment issue. Everything else seems to work. Yeah, everything else is working. I need to look at uh, comma and M, or is it just because they need a screw here? Let's put the screws in, or at least one down there. But yeah, all of the uh, graphite corrected keys are working perfectly now. Okay, M. Uh, no, M and comma. Wow, you're not even going to give me one, huh? <sighs> I don't want to do all the keys. <sighs> Undeniably, the graphite ones are flawless now. Oh, man. 
All right. Numpad seems okay. So we don't have to deal with the numpad. No, the things that I just fixed are in fact working. The things that I did not fix are not working. I, I have to graphite pad the whole thing. I really don't want to graphite the whole thing. I really, really don't. Not all of the keys have been done. There's a lot of fully functional keys that I have not added graphite to. But there are some that I haven't that aren't working. Did half a job last time that I learned from your mistake? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like we're in this for the long haul. I really did not want to do this today. This is awful. You two more hours of stream? Yeah. I tried my best to avoid this. You know, we might be able to get away with just those two. Were those the only two not working? Maybe we try doing the bad thing. How? Is this that loose? It's not that loose. Okay, let's try the bad thing. Can I cheat? That kind of worked, but I don't know if this is maintainable. We're going to try and cheat. Because I don't want to be here for six hours. Alright, so far so good. We want you to be here for six hours. No. <laughs> On that, I want some coffee. Could have sworn I did them all, yeah, really. <laughs> mm. Future man can fix it, screw that guy, exactly. Uh. I was gonna. Rinse this out, get some water, I'll be right back. Settle in. I think the cheater method's gonna work. We're gonna do every key. I don't wanna have to come back and do this again later. And if I can do this one at a time without having to actually take them out, we're just doing it. So, here we go. I'm amazed I haven't torn a hole in the paper yet. I do need to not rest my hand on the pads. The other thing I really like about the graphite method is that it is dry, which means nothing should change about this. There's nothing to dry out. It's only compressed more into the pads, so it's not like it's going to wear off. So this 
this should be a fairly ultimate solution. All right, that's the entire bottom row. <sighs> Tell us an anecdote about something? Oh gosh. Uh, here, hmm. Let me tell you a tale about me buying the Commodore pet. There you go. How about that? <laughs> so, I bought this Commodore pet um, from someone that I want to be respectful of, but truly the only way to describe them is that they were a hoarder. Um, they bought job lots of electronics that were being clearanced out by schools or institutions or things like that that would have like a, they'd be a full pallet of something and then they would be shipped with the asset tags attached to them and uh, it would just have like pallets of random things just sitting around all over in this warehouse and I didn't know this um, when I went to go get it so I wanted the pet uh, and I was going to try and negotiate with them. I'd found them through a Craigslist listing for a TRS-80 Model 4, uh, well, specifically a TRS-80 Model 4D. If you know what that is, you know, um, I'm not gonna get into it if you don't know. So I saw that and that they had a pet and I really wanted the pet. So the, the paper got a hole in it, I, I called it. So new fresh patch of graphite here. Uh, so I. I contacted them like, hey, I would like to um, get this pet in the TRS-80 Model 4. Um, and I think they may have said they had some Model M's too. So I emailed them through Craigslist. I was like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm interested in this stuff. I'm, I'm local. They were a two-ish hour drive from me. Uh, but you know, it was a pet. <laughs> it was worth it. So that was good. They emailed me back. They're like, yeah, we can do that. How about this meetup time? All right. Uh, so I went uh, to that area um, and I actually was going to meet up with someone so I ended up going there the day before the meetup time and they ended up calling me the night before and they were like hey you know are you a, uh, a collector or a reseller and they're like that's a really weird question I'm a collector and they're like okay because I have a lot um, and I didn't understand what he meant by like a lot. And he said, bring gloves and a flashlight. So I <laughs> uh, get them from a year old elementary school. No. So I was like, okay, that's weird. So before the day before I went there, uh, I stopped at Walmart and got uh, gloves and flashlight. So I get to the address and it's in an industrial complex and it's a massive warehouse, absolutely enormous. Like I genuinely, I was like, this can't possibly be the right place. This is the wrong address. I call the guy, he's like, oh no, I see you outside. I'll open the door. So he opens the door and the shelves are like 15, 20 feet tall. Like you would need a ladder to climb up some of these shelves to look at everything. Um, and he just has, stuff packed floor to ceiling here um it, it was beyond overwhelming and the warehouse was the size of like a walmart okay we're talking massive absolutely jam-packed uh this was my computer reset before computer reset happened so you might have wondered why i never went to computer reset i've been there i've done that it's it's a, a stressful environment um so I, I got get in there and I had this like secret other thing that I was really hoping for. The guy um, said he had a lot of stuff and I was like, man, I really hope he has an Atari ST because I was really, really wanting an Atari ST. Um, and I kept looking around for it, but then I kept finding more and more other things. Um, he had recordable laser disc machines. Now these were Sony machines uh, and 
I only had one question for him about those when I saw them. Do you have media? <laughs> and he's like, ah, you know. And I'm like, yeah. Because <laughs> it's easy to find uh, Laserdisc recorders. It's impossible to find blank media. Uh, so he's like, no, I don't have media. I'm like, ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Because <laughs> I would have bought them on the spot. And he knew that. Um, I was there looking through everything for 14 hours. All right. Uh, it was a one-on-one -on -one tour of like every single thing there. And I was uh, taking note of where some things were uh, and going through because it didn't make sense trying to negotiate prices on things like throughout the entire day. We'd be there all day talking about every single little, little individual thing. It would have just been a giant waste of time. Uh, so we were just kind of taking notes where things were. Uh, come back and get them later. Uh, so we go through... It's actually three different locations um, that I had to walk through. And uh, it was just an absolute ridiculous amount of stuff. Uh, some standout things. There was a shelf full of Bernoulli box drives and media. Um, literally probably 50 Model M's. Uh, let's see, some other things. There was some kind of black box IBM mainframe type system. Uh, that he just straight up said, this isn't for sale, there's a museum coming to get it. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I wasn't even going to make an attempt at that. Um, this was long before I had the data generals. Uh, we're talking like 2016, maybe, is when this actually happened. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that this place was not organized. Um, there was just things all over, random empty garbage boxes everywhere. Like, uh, there was a a pile of just loose five and a quarter inch floppy disks uh, that stood out to me that was on a corner of uh, one of the shelves. Like it's just sitting there, just loose floppies. So I take a note of a bunch of things. I don't even remember what all at this point because it was just so much. Um, and we get to the end of the day, again, after 14 hours. Oh, well, first off, um, the TRC Model 4D was one of the big things I was there for. It was listed as working. I get, we get to where the Model 4D is, all right? Uh, it's not a 4D, <laughs> it's just a 4, and it doesn't work. And then this is, uh, this machine was actually in a storage unit off of the normal property, so I wasn't able to uh, wait and negotiate about it later. So just like on the spot, we had to discuss this thing. Uh, and he was like, I want, it was something like $350, um, at the time. And that was a shocking amount of money for, <laughs> it was broken. You were there. <laughs> Sounds like a neat order. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a, a shocking amount of money, um, for a broken four and I could not get him to accept the fact that it was not a 4D and that because it was broken, it was not worth that much. And that was my first insight into, oh no, I'm not going to be able to make a deal with him about anything. Um, now, you meant to say you've been there. Okay. Because I know I wasn't the only person who went through all this stuff. I was the only one there at that time, but I wouldn't be surprised. It had to all go somewhere. Like, we're, we're talking about millions of dollars worth of inventory <laughs> it's something happened to it all so yeah i'm sure i'm not the only person who took a tour through there uh so i was not able to make a deal on the model four uh i had to give up on that um uh, what did he have that required so much storage space it was it was it was not individual items it was in a, the amount of stuff it was it was it was bad he was a hoarder. It was an unhealthy situation. Uh, so the Model 4 was like, oh, I'm kind of, this isn't, this isn't good. Because <laughs> at that point, I think I was like eight hours into it at that point. Um, and then I had already made notes of things like, oh, this is not going to be good for the things that I want to get. Uh, and there was one thing that I gave up on that I regret not pushing a little harder. There was a Voodoo 4. Um, that I now think he wouldn't have recognized and he probably would have given me for a reasonable price. Because uh, one of the things he was doing 
He was using his phone on like Worth Point or some paid eBay service like that to try and look up the value of every single thing that I mentioned, okay? We're talking a Walmart-sized warehouse, and he was trying to look up every single item to get the absolute maximum possible value, not understanding, like, dude, he, oh, the, the lease was up. He had to get it cleared out. This was the other thing. Like, it wasn't, you know, like, oh, you know, he just was offering to let people look through this. No, he actually needed this to be done, like, gone empty, okay? And, and he was trying to get the maximum amount of value for every possible little thing by looking it up. So it was uh, it was becoming clear that this wasn't going to go well, but there were still a handful of things that I was willing to buy even at like full eBay prices. And one of them was IBM Model M's. Uh, at shortly after the TRS-80 Model 4, um, we got to a different storage unit that had I think I talked about this already, like 50 Model Ns. And I was like straight up with him. I didn't even let him look him up. I was like, I will give you, and again, this is 2016. This wasn't actually a good deal. I will give you $75 a piece for the keyboards as long as I get to pick which ones. And I was able to pick all of his best keyboards that were in the best cosmetic condition that had all the keycaps. Um, and I got SDL cables for every single one of them, plus a couple of rarer long SDL cables. Um, and I was, they're all the, uh, the more optimal. I have one sitting here. This is actually one of the ones that came from him. Uh, they are all the 1391, 1401 models. Every single one of them, which is one of the more desirable models. But I was able to make that work and I bought seven of them, um, if I remember correctly. That was how many? Uh, so that worked out. That was a lot of money, but uh, I really wanted a lifetime supply of Model M's. At that point, I had bought one of the later hardwired but still buckling spring Model M's, and I knew I wanted that to be my forever keyboard. So I wanted a lifetime supply of them. So I was able to negotiate those, which I then I gave him the money on the spot for those. Um, and that let him know I am a serious buyer. So we were then able to actually negotiate on things after that because money had exchanged hands. So it gets towards the end of the day. Um, again, we're, we're at like hour 13 here, okay? And I have a pile of things that I'm going around collecting and then we're trying to negotiate prices. And we get to the pet, all right? Um, the PET was untested. We did not have the ability to plug it in with where it was stored. The monitor bezel was broken right there, if you guys remember. Um, and what you didn't know is that the inside of it, I could see through the back, was utterly disgusting. This is the only PCB I have ever washed in a sink. It was horrendous. And it, I really didn't think it would work. It was clear that it had water damage. And I told him, I will give you $60 for it, okay? And I was like, that's it, that's my limit, is $60. And this was at like the 14th hour, okay? This was the final thing we were negotiating. And he brought up his phone, scrolled through them, and then just kind of just like, you got a deal. <laughs> he just accepted it, finally, as the last item and I managed to get the pet for 60 bucks. I took it home, I tore it all apart, I hand washed the key, the PCB, the motherboard in the sink, um, put it all back together, flipped it on, and it worked. Um, and then the keyboard was a complete nightmare like it is right now, and it has never really been solved. But uh, that's the keyboard fully graphited now. That's it, that's all, that's all the pads. So that's kind of the bad distracted version story of how I got the Commodore pet. It was from a hoarder who had way too much stuff, who wanted way too much money for the majority of them, and I managed to beat him down on so many things over so long that he was able to sell me the pet for 60 bucks. Now on tested units of fetching 300, yeah. They, they weren't going for cheap then. Again, this was 2016. Um, 
but it was, it really didn't look like this thing was going to work. <laughs> it really didn't. Um, I thought I was buying it for parts. So, all right. Uh, that's, that's all the pads I'm going to do. This all worked fine, so we're not going to touch that. I know I'm going to regret that later, but I genuinely want to be done. So, yeah. Uh, I actually haven't watched that much YouTube about vintage computer stuff, so I have no, I have not seen RMC's, uh, restoration videos. This might sound weird, but I, I don't watch all that much YouTube. All right. So you just flipped yours over, same model? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very common model, um, for the, uh, 80s ones. But yeah, I was I wanted those specifically. It's OCD how well they clean it. Yeah. You sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you don't. I I am not a fan of over restoration. So and I'm not accusing RMC of doing that. I will say sometimes people go overboard, like when there's a broken plastic case and they remold it out of epoxy or whatever. That's like, okay. <laughs> there are probably thousands of these things left. I don't, I don't think we're at that point yet, but it is cool. The warehouse obviously had a large collection of unbranded Rockwell chipset ISA modems. I would be shocked if they weren't there. Oh, I will say, yeah, one of the things that I saw at the warehouse was an SE1224 in the box. Um, but there was so much stuff, and it took so long I forgot that it was even there. Um, so I didn't end up getting that. Uh, but I also didn't see a, an Atari ST computer at any point anyway. It's the name of the game where you enter a hedge mage text adventure we used to load from tape drive in school. Oh gosh, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I don't know that. I feel like you're watching YouTube when you make videos might not have feeling a little bit like work. I cannot watch YouTube videos without thinking about every single thing they do. Uh, additionally, when I watch YouTube videos, generally I kind of watch things that aren't related to what I do. So, like an example here, um, I want to be clear, this is not a criticism, all right? Uh, but as a, just a completely random out of the blue example, okay? There is a car channel, uh, Cletus McFarland. Uh, they do the time-lapse music type thing, and they use one song. <laughs> so every single time, uh, they like do a time lapse of working on a car. They use the exact same song, and I bet most people don't notice that. But to me, I notice that every time. Uh, so yeah, that's the kind of thing that makes it difficult for me to watch videos sometimes. Curious Mark does the same. So Curious Mark is a different case. Um, Curious Mark barely does YouTube, I want to say. It's not, like, his thing. Uh, the example I gave, they're a very big YouTuber. That <laughs> It's their job. Uh, so when they do that kind of thing, it just kind of is like, it sucks that I put so much effort into things to avoid doing repetitive stuff like that. And then the, the massive channels with tons of success can just, they just do it. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. And it's apparently me obsessing about details, but it still bugs me to, to do that kind of thing. Not uh, It's not envy of the success. It's just that. So, Curious Mark is a head case. No, 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 no. No, it's more that Curious Mark is working at a different scale on YouTube. Oh, his channel might actually be bigger than mine. I'm not sure as far as subscriber count. But I mean, he's not like a multi-million subscriber channel. And even if he was, the level of effort that he puts in is different. It's not trying to be full, high-quality production videos. So. Yeah, it's very, very easy to overuse assets. That's one of the reasons why I don't use music in videos. 
It's way too easy to overuse that stuff. It was a goal of mine to write like a full album's worth of music and then only use that for a year and then write another album's worth of music because I will only use music I wrote myself so that I own full control over how uh, it's distributed and stuff. Uh, but I realized, wow, that's really hard. <laughs> so no music. All right. Mark Valley's content over production. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. You can have both, but that's not everyone's goal. So. Oh. Uh, see, now, Yorl86 there, you, you make a very interesting point. I don't mind when time lapses have the same music from the same content creator. It is a signature. And when I hear that song in another context, it reminds me of that creator. So that's one of the things. The song in particular that Cletus was using, perfect keys uh, response there, by the way. Um, that's a generic YouTube library song that they're using. And I've heard other channels use it. So that's another thing. When you use the YouTube like free royalty free music, you don't own that. And if you lean too heavily on that one song, reusing it over and over again, and you associate it with your channel, when you hear it somewhere else, it breaks that. And then you realize that's not actually part of their stuff, and it feels really strange. Um, so yeah, I don't, that's what, another reason why I will not use royalty-free music, is that it becomes a part of your brand um, without you even realizing it. And it's just, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. So, but yeah, again, not criticizing anyone here. All right, everyone has different objectives with this kind of stuff. Uh, that's just how I think about all of these things, and why I make the decisions I do. So, there is no music. I have to put it on your own, and then sometimes we'll get annoyed when you have to turn off your music when the music happens. That's hilarious. <laughs> More punk rock montages, yeah. Eh. Uh, see, meanwhile over here, I just know which end of the piano you're supposed to blow into. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, uh, yeah, that's keyboard fully functional now. Oh gosh. Uh. All right, there we are. That method works though. So we can reassemble this now. Okay. You're gonna make music with the pet? No. Yeah, can we start the stream now? Yeah. You were the one who wanted me here for doing this for six hours, Majenko. <laughs> You're getting what you asked for. All right. Uh, yeah, it'd be really nice if we could actually, you know, use the printer that I bought today. That would be swell. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I should realize something. I should have uh, the YouTube chat open on the other monitor. Also, I should stop streaming remote desktop from my server. I keep forgetting I need to close that. I wonder how much data that uses. Um, but hello, DJ Marble. So. Uh, did you also buy an old inkjet to experience pure pain? You know, okay, so... <laughs> I saw part of LGR's video about the Canada bubble jet printer, okay? Uh, and I only want to step aside and talk about this because I've already done a video about a bubble jet printer in like 2016 or 2017. And I went into that video thinking I knew exactly what the problem would be, but then his had like completely other unrelated demons to what mine had um, I didn't finish the video so I don't know how far he got into it um, but yeah those BJC printers are terrible um, and the real thing is that you have to clean out the ink uh, passage from the cartridge because you'll notice the cartridge is just a sponge uh, with ink inside of it there's actually a passage that goes through to the print head itself and you have to clean that out it ended just as one would expect. I, I don't know, did he baseball bat it? Because <laughs> I got mine working. So, but yeah, I just, I thought that was hilarious. Um, yeah, they're not good. 
but also that scanner works great. I, I don't know if he got to demonstrating the scanner or if he just wanted to shoot the printer out of a cannon into the sun. Um, but yeah, I have a video with the scanner working. He had issues with the scanner? That's unfortunate. Oh, well, I did get the scanner working. <laughs> if you want to see it going, I guess. Uh, it's not unfortunate because it's really cool. It's not amazing, but it's cool. Also, mine was a portable version, which makes it more impressive. Ooh. This part's a pain in the butt. This case that goes around the keyboard doesn't really fit well up in here. I really prefer the versions of this that don't have this. Nothing worked. You bought two and a 4,000. Have them all fail. That's awful. Uh. BJC80 battery pack scanner cartridge. Need to get some ink to use again. Probably your favorite printer. That's basically the one that I have. I have a BJC85. I may have an 82. I have, I have several of them, but I've only got one. I'm only bothered restoring one. Okay. No, don't need to hold that anymore. Yeah, the printer we're going to be using for this is based on the trusty app, Epson MX80, so it'll be rock solid. Something's not right on this side. Oh, that's it. Not great. Whew! Magnetic screwdriver saves the day. Is it this? What's the problem? This should be flush up against the thing there, but it's not, and I don't know why. Oh wait, that's catching on the edge right there. Okay, now I see what's going on. Actually putting the camera up in there helped. That's hilarious. <laughs> Any Apple bubble jets? Uh, they're probably Canon OEM. If they say bubble jet, I'm pretty sure that's only Canon. Uh, but no, I don't have any Apple bubble jets. I would not go out of my way to get one. <laughs> uh, Poot, I know mine does that. I just haven't cared. Aha! There we go. So I don't know what the solution is. I have not attempted to solve it on mine. Beautiful. Alrighty. Do I have the same issue on the other side? I do. <laughs> You're going to see this pop up and in there. That's the wrong one. Perfect. Keyboards, I tell you. All right. You have two. I have, uh, I have the image writer, and then I have an image writer too, and I think that's it. In the color one scanner, whatever model it is, the one that I thought had a dead fluorescent bulb, and then it turned out it didn't. I don't remember what was wrong. I think it may have just not been plugged in correctly. I haven't tried that one yet, though. We should do that someday. Should figure out which of my Macs are like color. <laughs> Can you figure out how to use one? I don't know how to use a Mac. Max, whatever.
All right, last screw. I can't believe that in the Commodore Pet stream, I actually had to spend two hours fixing the keyboard again. I genuinely cannot believe it. I am, I'm very annoyed by that fact. <sighs> All right, it's a computer. It's usable. Stupid keyboards. I hate you. There we go. I have my clock so far. Oh, that one? Um, so, fun fact, for those of you who may not know, if you're looking at this clock, so that clock um, is from a retail Super Bowl countdown. Um, and internally, it uses an 8051 and I think a 555 as a timer. So it is like the most hacker clock you could ever imagine. Uh, but the timing is terrible. It runs very fast. Uh, so I could go and reset the time, but then it'll just be off again. Uh, so I generally just let it run slightly farther ahead. And when it gets to like a half an hour ahead, then I'll roll it back. Uh, so we're at the 13 minutes ahead point right now. We're about halfway there. Um, I don't find that it's a problem. As long as it runs fast instead of slow, it doesn't cause any issues because I use that to determine when to start stream. I don't use that to determine when to end stream. So it, I usually get ready slightly early sometimes, so not a problem. It's hacky with GPS. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the NMEA clocks are uh, way more accurate. I will agree. All right clock fixing stream. I mean, if I knew how to extract the firmware and I could add an offset, I would actually. That would be kind of cool. The uh, ST-Link programmers that I got recently might actually be able to do it. But I don't know how to program 8051. That one's a, you know, a hurdle. Okay. So, that's a pet. It actually works now. Oh, I should put the screw back in. Hold on. I'm gonna... Why is there a keyboard screw loose? Man! Where does it go? Right there. Okay. Yeah, I'm on. There we go. The novelty does not ever wear off how cool and easy it is to get into this computer. I will say. It is always awesome. <laughs> it just pops right open. Never gets old. All right. Might be the 8051 with write once memory. I would not be surprised. It's like a China knockoff 8051 too. It's not like a proper Intel one. All right. So we're now going to look at the printer. It's time to print. I want to print from my pet. This is the next objective. This is the main objective for this stream. But this is our next objective. So we're going to do whatever it takes to make this thing print now. The first thing we have to do is get a GPIB cable. But we can't actually use a GPIB cable. We have to use a stupid special Commodore cable. The problem is on the back of the pet. This is what I was lamenting about. It does not have this connector. It has a card edge that comes straight off of the motherboard. So you need to find one of these cables or make one in order to use any peripherals with the pet. This sucks. I got super duper lucky when I got one of these uh, years ago. Uh, now they're like impossible to find. You can find so many forum threads of people trying to find one of these things. So this is like super rare. Uh, I have seen fewer of these than I have seen printers. And I've been trying to get a printer for a long time too. So it's just, uh, man. So the expansion door on the pet for, I think that's for the super pet. Um, I'm not sure, but there's not a lot of things that utilize it. Because pretty much everything was GPIB. So yeah, it doesn't matter. So, all right. We're gonna go ahead and get this connected though. Oh, no, we're not. We're gonna open the printer first, but I will go ahead and plug this into the back because that just gets us done. All right. That one's IEEE port. Beautiful. Okay. So we have GPIB run, but I do want to open the printer first just to see what all is in there and see if I should reform any tabs. Hopefully not, because I really don't want to delay this anymore. 
Uh, let me find a thing to put it on. That'll work. Oh, towel, even better. All right. Uh, I'm gonna pull out the ribbon cartridge here, uh, so it doesn't like leak or anything. Uh, and I don't think there's anything else I need to worry about. No, there's no sound dampening foam from the looks of it. So, slip this over, get the screws out, and see what the uh, inside is looking like. Those are really far down. Holy moly. Okay. Uh, screw container again. We need to cap map the printer. Hopefully not. Uh, and I would almost, I would be surprised if there isn't a... Uh, a known cat map out there for an Epson MX80 already. Although I'm not 100% sure this is a pure Epson MX80. Because it seems a little custom. None of my other ones look like this. But it is the same ribbon cartridge and it's the same design language. As far as like how things are laid out. But it, it feels slightly different. I may just have never encountered a 70s one. I don't know. Although I don't know whether this is the 70s. See, there's no date on the back. I don't know. This is a long screw. We are not going to make as much progress today as I was really hoping for, so I'm, I'm genuinely disappointed. I would still like to get a disc image made. Uh, let me keep track of those. Ooh, the machine is really dead. That's weird. Okay, that one. That did not release. Ah, it's not great plastic. Let go, screw. Oh my gosh. There we are. I just noticed something hilarious about the faceplate. Let me pull. It's not a set screw on that, is there? No. So I'm going to rock that off. I think. Yeah, that's going. Perfect. Okay. The one button connected to the front. Uh, <laughs> giant wire going all the way around. That's hilarious. Okay, there we go. Uh, but I just noticed this. The badge along the front has a protective strip that has never been peeled off. <laughs> you see the bubbles there. It's never been peeled off. <laughs> okay, that's a big cap. Ah, that's close. Ooh. I think we've reformed smaller caps than that, but that's the only one. That's a voltage. 50. Mm. It's right on the edge. Oh, Purdue. That's 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 nice. Produced in July of 1981. It's just right there. Now now we know. That's a really, really fancy production date sticker. All right, in general, it's kind of gross in here. Um, so that's unfortunate. I'm gonna try and take off the can cap here. I think those are bits of dead bugs in there, so that's great. <laughs> Actually, this is a job for Stubby. Oh, yeah. 
ice perch. Well, this is going to be actually really good to open this. That looks fantastic. I'm excited. Okay. Trying to see if there's a... Wow, that actually says Commodore on it. Come on, where is it? I know it's going to have a, a 6502 in here. It just has to. Commodore could never help themselves. Anything that plugs into anything has a 6502. Come on, where is it? Sixty-five three two. I don't think those are. Sixty-five twenty-two. I think that's just a peripheral. You can chip. Eh, maybe there isn't a sixty-five oh two in there. Yeah, real MOS. Uh oh, indeed. <laughs> What's the metal box? Uh, that's the uh, RF modulator, isn't it? <laughs> that's for the video out. I don't know why there is a canned box in here. There's a clock. Yeah, I don't know why that's canned. Yeah, weird. Okay, uh, in general, it's slightly gross in here, but it's not that bad. Um, oh man. Look at this lovely Toshiba TO2. That's that's fantastic. I love finding old Toshiba parts and things. I don't know why. They're they're literally my favorite. I genuinely don't understand why. I just love it. I think it's hilarious. Well, here's my guess. I'm going to speculate, Commodore bought everything up uh, from Epson, probably the this and this, um, and then they made the PCB themselves. That's my guess. Because the board says Commodore on it. Right there. Although made in Japan, maybe it's made for Commodore by Epson. I don't know, it's weird. So, if I remember correctly, the way the HP printer works, which is Epson MX80, uh, there is an, an interface adapter board that goes in over here, and then it adapts essentially LPT into GPIB, whereas this one's just natively GPIB. Also, this is what I needed to get in here to fix for sure. Um, this nut is loose on the GPIB retention screws. Can we vacuum out the bugs? The bugs are what gives it flavor. Uh, we probably should. Might want to wipe off this linear rail too. Yeah, we'll go ahead and ESD back this. Uh, dump the ROM. I have no idea what the ROM is. It's probably that. It's got an MOS part on it. I don't, I don't want to try and figure that out right now. It was not difficult to get in here, so I'm not going to worry about it. But let's do some vacuuming. <laughs> How loud is the vacuum for you guys? It's not especially quiet, but I have attempted to do some things to quiet it down. So I'm just curious how effective that's been. It's loud? Okay. And not a lot I can do about that. Oh, 
There's a lot of fun guts in here, geez. <laughs> Maybe there's paper dust. I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's bug dust. much better. Don't forget the top cover. It was the inside gross. The front's not great. What is this red stuff? <laughs> I don't like that. Look at the difference there. ESD back is the MVP cleaning hardware. I could see a red form or something spewing dust if it's like a carbon copy. That could make sense. It genuinely, um, I think I regret buying the ultrasonic cleaner because it has not had that much utility to me. And I would say if anyone was considering an ultrasonic cleaner, they should just get an ESD vacuum instead. I think it's a much better purchase. At least for vintage electronics usage, I think the ESD vacuum makes way more sense. <laughs> If the high pitch was reduced, it wouldn't be so bad. All right. Why not both? Because the ultrasonic cleaner is like $300. That's why. <laughs> Let me use a paper towel and clean out the crevices in this. He's an ultrasonic vacuum. <laughs> I didn't just leave that scratch, did I? I don't think I did. Alright, we're not going to town on this. That's not the objective. We don't even know if it works. I just wanted it to be not gross. There's definitely some parts of it that are gross. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, see, they haven't used it much in the limited use case for small manufacturing type thing. For small scale cleaning, th there are those instances, but they're just very few and far between for me. Because let's say something like this board, okay? Let's say I want to clean this, okay? I just ESD cleaned it. There's no problems with the vacuum. But if I was going to ultrasonic clean this, I would have to remove this crystal. That would be required, or it would be destroyed. Uh, and then I would need to look through here. If there's anything else I would need to remove, um, I, would, I would remove those giant caps, probably. At least these two. These ones might be safe, but it's, it's a little risky. Um, so yeah, there's things that I would need to remove, and then I would have to let it dry versus ESD vacuum, go through it, it doesn't upset the fragile things, and then it just will be fine. So it's just, eh, so. All right. Let's put this back together now. And uh, actually, let's power it like this. Let's let's do this right now. I'm going to say, what's the capacity on this thing? 6,800 UF. Oh man, I don't know. I should probably reform this thing. I really don't want to. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take a rare YOLO risk here. All right. Um, that's off. Yes, that's off. Wow, actually, that's kind of interesting. It says 
both zero and one and on and off. And look at the amazing font for off and on. That's wonderful. I love that power switch. <laughs> I just wouldn't risk a vintage crystal poot. It's it's not worth it. All right, here we go. That is unbelievably quiet. What? That was insane. That's shocking. Uh, there's one button that I don't have plugged in. I can plug it in, I can hold it and turn it on and see if it does something. Green source is that a line? Tier one and says hello. And a line. <laughs> Green source, thank you for the tier one sub and for 25 months there. I very much appreciate that. Wow. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, let's put it back together and then we'll test it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're ready to print, I guess. I don't know if it can detect the lack of ribbon. That's possible. We're going to use the old ribbon first. Um, I have brand new ribbons because this is an Epson MX80 compatible printer. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be able to just pop in a brand new one that's never been used later uh, if this one's bad but for right now we're going to keep that one in there because we're going to mess with it for a bit and uh, no reason to waste good ribbon on learning this mechanism is uh, not intuitive and this particular one's kind of bad right. that's that's loaded there we go. All right, the ribbon should advance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure the ribbon advances here. I'm gonna plug it back in, turn it off and on one more time. It should automatically advance. Yep, perfect on the re reverse. Beautiful, it's perfect. This thing is amazing, wow. It's so quiet, watch the, that thing. It's just gonna be murder loud. All right, refuse to believe that is the sound of a functioning <laughs> dot matrix head. Oh, the head is not, uh, activating yet. That's just the uh, the stepper for this. The head is not doing anything, but still, usually the stepper stuff is louder than that. I'm excited. I'm very excited, actually. I have wanted a printer for my pet for so long, and this one seems like it's going to be really good. Oh, man. I find it impressive that it's quiet, but with the pet, I kind of want something that's just over the top, ridiculous loud. Like I, I want that vertical tractor one and I'm gonna add like a speaker inside that amplifies the sound. <laughs> like, I want it to be so obnoxious to go with the pet. I mean, come on, this thing is, it's obnoxious to look at. It's gotta sound the part too. That should th sound like that was angry, man. Yes, that's what it needs to be. MX80s are not quiet, so maybe that will be loud. Maybe we'll get our sound out of that. We'll see. Back over the platinum knob. There we are. Uh, I'll wait and put that on until after I get the screws in. All right. Is that uh, aligned correctly in the rear? It doesn't feel like it. It's on.
fully autopic, hard drive, recovering, bad head's gotten a 90.99.9. Awesome. There's something over here preventing it from going all the way down. Oh, it's just the case being wonky. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Get it all nice and tightened. This one never came out. Yeah. This is enough time to start shopping for a matrix line printer. You guys have never seen it. I have a massive, absolutely insane uh, Epson line printer. We're talking like that big on a platform. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's not a chain printer um, and it's very late, but uh, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> One of these days I'll try to find a chain printer, but they're they're not common. <laughs> All right. Return the platen knob. And that printer is ready to rock. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Commodore Pet Printer! <laughs> Let me go get some paper. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a bottom feed. That would have been cool, but you know, can't have everything. Alright, uh, that's all used. Yeah, that. Um, I thought I had a bunch of random, already cut, loose stacks of dot matrix paper. Maybe it's over here. It's not. Where? Ooh, is that it? No, that's spiral bound. Manual. Envelopes. Oh. I don't want to waste those, but this would be, I still owe you a letter with one of those. I will address it with one of these. <laughs> um, if you can DM me on Discord that. <laughs> I don't know where a bunch of my loose stuff is, but uh, we'll just grab this. All right. Those of you who have never had, uh, the label on the front is coming loose, but that's not what we were talking about. Wesley sent me, uh, it should be over here. Um, might have also been integrated in some of my printer supplies somewhere else. Uh, uh, Wesley sent me a bunch of, I swear, they're like two feet away from me right here. Where, where did I put it? Are you kidding me? Right here? No. I am bad. Anyway, they're actual envelopes on tractor feed paper. Um, they, <laughs> they're, they're crazy. All right, so yeah, if you've never done this before, um, this is how you load paper into one of these. So it feeds in from the rear, and you do have to pull it up. This is uh, one of the downsides of the Epsons. It's technically, you have to sacrifice one sheet uh, to pull this through, and then you'll get to the crease of the next one, and then you align it with the... Uh, snaps here. This was slightly too wide. So we'll fix that. You can reposition uh, both of these on this one. Fancy. 
Um, you can reposition that for the correct width of paper. So I actually have just address labels that are only about that wide that you could put in there as well. And uh, if you do that while the printer is on, after you get it to this point, you press this button. You see it says TOF, that stands for top of form. But that's how you configure one of these. So we're now going to connect the GPIB cable to the rear. And yeah, I've never found a printer that seemed like it had this reasonably set up where you could plug in cables uh, with it loaded with paper. The GPIB connector going off to the side makes this slightly better than usual, but uh, still, it's not amazing. All right. That's everything there plugged in. Round sprockets are weird. I'm used to flexible belt tractors. Oh, the round sprockets are the older design. The belt tractors you're used to are usually on vertical uprights. Uh, when, they, when they do that, it's so that you can review it. But if your sheet goes straight out the back like this, this is generally how it's done. Now I'm gonna be lazy um, and cheap. I, never mind. It does not want to go backwards. We're gonna, we'll donate that paper to the cause, I guess. All right, we're gonna turn on the printer. Uh, on things it was so quiet. Did it actually home? I no, it didn't. Why? Why did it not? Is that off or on? That's off. Okay, I'm for my own sake. I'm gonna pull the head over so it has to home. It's not going. Why are you not going? Let me unplug the GPIB cable. So I'm sure you don't have to waste a sheet. You can engage this because of sprockets and mangle feet if you're brave enough. Oh gosh. Having two adjustable is fancy. Take your old Epson, probably MX80. Probably, it may have, most of mine, I think only the right side is adjustable. The left side is not. Hmm. Okay, we have light there, but when it's plugged into the pet, it doesn't uh, want to come to life. Maybe it'll activate once the pet turns on. Yeah, with it plugged into the pet, it does not want to turn on. Let's try turning on the pet, see what happens. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> It's printing time. Okay, let me grab the printer manual. This is not for this printer, but it's uh, for a very similar printer. So this will still be close enough for me to learn how to actually do this. Yeah, it might be a power saving feature. Okay. Oh man, I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, it's going to be almost impossible to see this, and uh, getting this lid out looks really, really hard. Like, I would break something if I attempted to do this. I'm not even going to be able to see when it actually prints. So, uh, maybe if I pull this up like this, yeah, you'll barely be able to see the printer side, but that's what it's going to take to be able to see it print. <laughs> so, I'll leave you at that angle. It's kind of awkward, but all right. 1978 a single frame, yeah. Pet screen capture, I don't have that set up. It kind of exists, but all right. Print command, let's let's give this a shot. So, open, oh, it's nice that it works now. Uh, five comma four, I did not um, put a space. Five comma four, oh, it's really nice having a functional keyboard, okay. Print. Um, number five, comma. Hello. Wait, did E just fail to work on me? No, no, it did not. Uh, it's a little crusty, but maybe not too bad. Hello. It says there, so we're doing there. There. Face is there. There. Yeah! Oh! The 
ribbon is uh, super dry. It doesn't look amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run that again. Actually, uh, 10, print, actually no, I'm gonna super cheap, hold on. I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna convert that to a line. Hold on, one, two, three, 10, boom, 20, go to, oh gosh, go to 10, run. File not open. What? List. File not. Oh, maybe we can't do that. Fine. One. Open. Five, comma, four. Come on, you'll print eventually. <laughs> Hmm, maybe we should get a different ribbon on there. <laughs> Once it's past the exposed section, hopefully the ribbon will be a lot better. Well, we can just try a new ribbon. Because I'm not, there is literally nothing showing up. Absolutely nothing. Uh, I could try the, the super sketch method. The do as I say, not as I do method. <laughs> This is not the new ribbon, no. Uh, I don't know what you mean, Jerk Sweeter. This is perfectly fine. Uh, hold on, I just want a, a thing here. Okay. There should be a section that will work up there. It might also smear junk all over the paper. We'll find out. All right. Run. That oh, paper got a good. And. Is that blue? That might be blue ink. Well, the pins are working at least. I can feel confident about that. All right, let's try the new ribbon. Stop, there we go. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't, but it is now? Yeah, um, my, my pot on the back of the monitor is very cranky. Um, what? Uh, that's new. That's really bad, actually. What just happened? That's not good. I've never had the brightness knob control a retrace like that. Usually that means it disconnected. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn it off and on again and uh, cycle it a bunch of times. Yeah, we may have just lost video. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, no. I'm pretty sure we just lost video. 
cool. My brightness knob has always been bad, but that's new. Um, what normally happens here is the brightness controls the minimum brightness level, and if it disconnects, it'll go full bright. Turning it down would usually reveal the text, but now we're at full bright constantly, it seems. Something else has failed. The monitor startup is sound is fine. Uh, I'm not hearing anything weird there. Oh my gosh. The first thing I'm going to do is check the CRT connection to the main board. Because if it's getting no video, it could look like that. I had text when I turned it off. Did it just work? What? This thing's cursed. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna just uh, we're gonna make sure that, that connector is good. This is the CRT connector. Um, good grief. Uh, okay, deox it. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. Let's see. And then it never worked again. Okay, we're just gonna go with that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, the PCB is very concerningly bendy. All right. <sighs> we're putting a new ribbon in the printer. Oops, I didn't mean to turn it off, but okay. All right. Printer ribbon change. This one is terrible. So, um, yoink. I don't know what this means. Exchange times? Maybe there was like a printer or a ribbon exchange program? I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> That's an official Epson ribbon. That's hilarious. <laughs> I put the screw in now, the computer won't work yet, really. All right. So, this is an Epson MX uh, FX ribbon here. All right. So, brand new sealed ribbon. This is a vintage ribbon, too, which means that it doesn't totally suck. Um, new ones are terrible. So we'll go ahead and put this in. Oh, there's there's lots of smell in that. There we are. Get the ribbon in place, which is total nightmare. It's genuinely really, really hard. Uh, 
there is no reason not to pull out excess ribbon to use it to wrap around stuff because uh, it cycles through. So if you pull out extra, it just ends up on the back end. So that's fine. You can tighten it. That should be good. It's a little high. Let's see if I can speed it down. Oh, it just wants to be a pain in the butt. Okay, there we go. Soggy re-inked the ribbon. Oh man, this one should be black. This should not be blue. It's also possible the other one wasn't blue and it was just the uh, thing, the, the, you know, the solution that I sprayed on there. <laughs> That made it look blue. All right, I'm gonna run or uh, type the program in as a program again. So 10 open five comma four twenty print five comma sup world it. Home boy, Mr. Ted. All right, thirty go to ten. No, go to twenty. Run. What do you mean, error? Open five comma four print number thing. List. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, I did zero go to twenty. Whoops. Um zero enter thirty. Oh, the three key is being a pain in the butt. Okay. 30, go to 20, run. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, that ribbon's not cooperating all that much either. Great. <laughs> Come on, wake up. Oh, I can see it. It's coming along. Okay, this ribbon might suck. That's pretty bad. Please stop program run now. There we go. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, if I, if I really mess with it, there you go. I think you can see it now. Um, I'm gonna try and pull through a bunch of ribbon. Are ribbons available? I'm gonna say no, because um, new ribbons I found are terrible. Uh, this should have been better though. Drill driver time. No, I've never actually tried that. But we should be into pretty new stuff there. Okay, let's try this one more time. It's not that much better. Huh. No, it's the ribbon. The needles look perfect. Like here, if I get into this brighter area. Man, you really can't see that. <laughs> Re-inking is not trivial. It's not something I'm just gonna do right now. <laughs> that's that's not happening. We can try the cheater one. Is there a paper thickness lever? That's a potential. You know what? I think it's right here. 
I wonder what that's going to look like. That's way better. That's much, much better. That's not perfect, but I think I'll take it. Yeah, that's that's wildly better. So there's the difference between uh, the two impression settings, and that also lends to the uh, carbon copy theory. Yeah, I bet it was being used for carbon copies. It was all the way back. Wow. You know what's weird is I think. Actually, I think that's all the way out. Hold on, we're gonna run. We're gonna. We're gonna trial and error this. Hold on, I want to try different settings. Run. So that's all the way out. One click forward. Monitor went blank. One more click forward. One more click. We're gonna ram it forward. That's really muffled. I think it's cramming into it there. I doesn't like that. Pull it out. Yeah, it's that's weird. I think it's actually doing better when it's further out. That's weird. Yeah, so when it's losing it like that, it's because it's too pressed into it. It's not... So this is actually carbon paper mode. That's weird. I wonder if it's miscalibrated or something. I should put the original ribbon back in and see what that looks like. Let's try that. Actually, <laughs> you got me curious. <laughs> ribbon <laughs> the uh, pet keeps losing video off to the side by the way just tear while trying to feed this in so that's great um, all right let's run it oh let's push it all the way down okay now this ribbon just sucks <laughs> yeah that ribbon sucks Okay, well, definitely a different ribbon. Although we could try the thing. I think this one's designed to be opened.
Okay, it totally is. That's weird. And I don't think I'm the first one to do this. <laughs> Spring steak popping out of the can. I do know what's in here. It needs to be opened with this side on the bottom. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who are not aware of what will be in here, uh, the ribbon is a long thing compressed in here uh, going all the way across. There's just a tremendous amount of it in there. Um, and it's all bunched up in there and if you take it out it's never going back in <laughs> um, you don't want to do that the front really does not want to come apart so it looks like there's plastic posts that go down into these these parts yeah i'm now at the point where i should not put it upside down again You open a color ribbon once. I don't know what your objective was with that. <laughs> Not a lot you can do with a color ribbon. Bingo. Okay, I don't think we broke a single post either. That's amazing. Okay. So, this is the ribbon. Um, this is a really nice cartridge. So what we could attempt to do is re-wet this. Yeah, it's an infinite loop. Yeah, you guys can't see anything. Uh, let me try this. Here, I'm gonna make it super bright. Now you can see what's going on in there. So, it gets pulled from one side and crammed into the other, so it gets pressed over all right that's how it works and that's why it's all like wrinkly because it's just kind of crammed in there yeah now it might be possible for me to put the get it to redistribute this by uh, spritzing with IPA. It might be. This is just the most cursed setup ever, but whatever. Come on. Why is it not spraying? There we go. This is awful. And that's not pressured. There. All right, I'm going to use the drill. Pull it through. Not manufacturer recommended? Well, no, because they want you to buy more. Uh-oh, ah, that's super bad. <laughs> I 
Okay, don't don't do it while it's open. <laughs> it it is except it is fine, but uh, that was not a good idea. Is there a ribbon under it now? There it is. Great. Uh, I don't want to make an enormous mistake here. This needs to be held like that. And this needs to not bunch up into that spot. Knock it off. Bad. Go away. You, though, you need to go down. You go over. Okay, and then this needs to feed in. into place and then I believe this goes down it really looks like it should lock into a hole down there but it does not want to uh, <laughs> Got it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> New plan. That'll allow me to put force on it. No, I'm not sure this is going to move enough of it to be worth it. Good news is this really doesn't matter that much if it pops out over there. It just needs to be put back in. Really, I could just hold something... Although, I only have so many hands. <laughs> Probably just be the cap on. Well, the thing that I wanted to do was to get it to run through and then spritz it again, but to expose new sides. I really don't want to put the cap back on. Maybe if I put pressure over here and pull it slightly down and make my finger extremely black. Yeah, that's like purple ink or blue ink or something. So I'm going to apply pressure downwards here and then I think that'll do it. Or it'll mess it up on this side. <laughs> I wasn't looking over there behind the drill. Oh! <laughs> Dial at says F dot Mary F dot C H E E R one hundred. End of line. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs>
It won't matter. We'll be okay. Don't worry about it. This is totally normal. <laughs> Thank you for the 100 bits, Ben. Pull it out and drill it back in? Uh, no. It, it has to do a full all the way through round. I don't know that we can. Here the Earthling says C-H-E-E-R 100 F F F we are on a tangent again. End of line. <laughs> Actually, the printer's the primary objective here, so, you know, this isn't really that much of a tangent. But thank you for the 100 bits, Jorg. <laughs> Uh, the ribbon is very dry still. Yeah, it's not great, but it's it's getting me a little bit, but not that bad. We're almost done. There's not a lot left to return back into here. You stay down there. Pro tip, don't. Just just don't. 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 <clears throat> just don't printers. Just just even the printers. Just no. Just no. Except I really like printers. <laughs> Come on, work with me here. We're almost done. Don't bunch up in stupid ways. Bunch up in the, the correct way to bunch up, you know. Getting close. There we go. Ugh. Blah. All right. Uh. Whoo. Okay. Oh, man. stay in there. Yeah, that definitely re-awakens it. Uh, so we're just trying to re-ink the ribbon so it's actually useful. Now 
I'm just gonna really saturate it. We'll just see what happens. Whatever. There. <laughs> Putting it back together. And then I can run it through at an accelerated pace. With less concern. Now, how about I run this at like a lower torque setting? I should make it slower. It's amazing how different it looks at spots. You know, with the drill motor method, I could see maybe being able to hold a pad here with ink and being able to re-ink. I don't know. Yeah, we put isopropanol on it. It won't really do that much. The idea behind the isopropanol is that the dots that only hit... You might need to adjust the exit tension spring to apply a little more tension. C-H-E-E-R 100. End of line. On this side? I don't, I don't, it wasn't really that adjustable. But thank you for the 100 bits, Coder Joe. Um, it, it's, it's pretty tight. I, I'm not that concerned about it. If anything, I think it's too much tension. Um, I could see using an ink pad somehow or something and doing that, so. It's looking a lot better now it's not all dry up. Well, we'll find out. So you're using this plotter instead. <laughs> yeah, IPA evaporates extremely quickly. It, that is a flaw with this method. This might work for a little bit, but the idea is to redistribute the ink. But it doesn't. It's not guaranteed that it'll actually work. Let's try this again. Yeah. All right. And video's being messed up. Come on, knock it off. Where's the thing? There we go. Okay. Ten. Open. 5, 4, 20, print, actually, uh, nope, 5, uh, you know what I'm kind of curious here, I'm going to see it print the special characters, they should be in the rum for the printer I think, um, let's see, um, Door printer. Okay. And 30, go to 20. All right. 
I'm just going to run that. Good catch. <laughs> All right. And we'll see what we get here. Uh, making this darker makes it a little easier to see. So I'll do that. All right. And run. Error. Why is that an error? Syntax error in 20. It looks right though. List. I don't want to touch the manual now. Oh, is it print comma? I bet it's print comma. Local H HP was doing that first. Cough, cough. <sighs> I think it printed the graphics characters, even though you can't tell. Um, so yeah. Well, that was a waste of time. All right. Um, well then. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, I really don't want to like burn through 800 sheets of paper. <laughs> We've gone through a lot of paper. <laughs> uh. So I can see some wet parts coming up. Yeah, here we go. So this is currently actually wet. It's very inconsistent, but it does work. Just need paper backwards, yeah. So, but we got special characters and everything. That's pretty sweet. That's nice. That's super cool. It looks better, but it's temporary. Yeah, if it has a built-in test, I have no idea how to run it. Top of form did not do what I thought it would do. Apparently, you have to set top of form by turning it off and on. So, off supply store for stamp and ink, maybe. That might be the way to go. I would like to see if I can get an ink roller and try that, so, hmm. Yeah, there's only one button, Zedzark, and it doesn't do it. <laughs> so let's turn it off. I'm going to hold the button. Oh my gosh, of course. It's just got to make me look like an idiot. I swear I didn't do this last time. That's hilarious. This pin sounds so tortured. That's nice though. That's cool. I really like this thing. Especially in the graphics, it's really weird sounding.
Alright, that's awesome. That's so cool. I really like this thing. That was a great purchase. Oh, man. I wish this thing would cooperate. It's over here flickering around the video. The problem is it is the volume, the, the brightness knob. So if I poke it, you'll see it does stuff. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. All right. That's cool, all right. I swear it's blue ink. Maybe it's just thin or how the IPA reacts with it. I don't know, that's, that's something, all right. Now we fix the pet, no. Eh. The problem is I need a new pot for the CRT, and but it's a weird, super long shaft one. I've never been able to find a replacement. So I don't know. All right. It's just very, very old black, all right. It would be, I've never seen a colored ribbon. It would be cool if I could find one. So all right, we can make the printer work. It works best with its original ribbon. I bet I could open this one up and do it. This one, is this pinch welded? No, it just doesn't have the snaps. Okay, so I could open this one up and IPA it as well. So that's a thing, but not right now. So, uh, let's see, take it apart and clean it. I already took apart, oh, the pet. No, we're not doing that. Uh, I kind of want to move on to the disc drive now. You guys wanted to see some games. I have games on here now. <laughs> so let's do, let's get the disc drive out. The whole stack of paper just fell down. See, if we had an under, uh, if we had a bottom feed, I could get the printer stand out. We could just have this, you know, solved. But no, and now the paper tore. Great. All right, well, there. Setting that paper aside. All right. Promise is boring spreadsheets? I did not promise that. <laughs> you requested it and I giggled because I don't have a VisiCalc ROM to put in here. All right. I'm gonna put this down and get the cable out from under the computer. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put it on top of the monitor for just a second here. Let me pull it slightly more forward. So I can grab the extraordinarily heavy disk drive. Oh my gosh. And put it here. Actually, I'm going to pull this over. And I'm going to put the printer down behind the drive for a second because I want to open my drive. Uh, we have a secondary objective here with the drive, all right? Do I have an iOmega Jazz drive? Yes, I think. Pretty sure. Give me one second. Possibly not. If you have media, though, I still want it. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna open this up here. Why do you have all the toys that hate you? <laughs> Alright, I, I need to open this uh, and take a look at it for very annoying reasons. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, wow. Okay. So that is, where's the towel? This will work. That's the inside of the 8050, okay. One moment, oh, those are, huh. This is very confusing. I'm gonna preface this with this is not mine. Someone I know just got a 4040 and uh, well, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna be 
very blunt about this, some crackheads got to it and ripped out all the copper. Because they're idiots. Um, so the caps are missing, the wires are missing. There's the wire is literally torn off of the head of this floppy drive. Um, and it's just very, very frustrating. And I wanted to see what is different between these two. And the answer is every single thing. So, yeah. That's too bad. <sighs> this AC meth has, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, they ripped out... Yeah, they, they left the transformer because that was screwed down. They couldn't just rah, rip on that. No, yeah, the transformer's still in there. It's really bad. It's so bad. You can see the wires are just cut here. It, it's very unfortunate. The nice case comment. Is there a Commodore Drive emulator? Because this is a candidate. Um, very irritating. I don't know who manufactured these innards they look kind of shugart so they might be shugart based i don't know i don't think they're tandon this board is almost tandony but it's not quite yeah it's still salvageable Ooh, i don't know here's the thing that makes me really nervous all right so look at this this is the wire that comes off of the head on the bottom side right there. This is the same wire on the other drive. It has been completely ripped off. Now it's possible that it didn't get damaged farther up, but if it's damaged farther down into here, it's epoxied into this. And there's only so much wire you can replace before damage is done. So it may be re restorable, but I don't know. Rebuilding stream when? Well, I, I don't know. It, it's not mine again. Wow, they tried to pull out the transformer. They took out these screws, idiots. I think <laughs> they re they tried to remove the transformer and they took out the screws that hold the laminated layers together for the assembly process. It's lacquered on the side, so it doesn't come apart still. So they tried to take these out. They stripped that one. They stripped that one too. They didn't realize you're supposed to take them out from the bottom off of the posts. And this is awful. This is probably helpful, but the other thing is that it was modified at some point. So these are like three switches that I don't do no, know what they do. They were soldered onto the chips directly. Uh, so in addition, um, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that is actually. That's weird if that was cut and then had something soldered to it but it's been modified as well so it's been ruined and it's been modified so it's just there's all sorts of concerns about this one uh but it's very it's completely different from mine that, that's what i'm getting out of this um mine doesn't have all the inductors going to the port although the basic layout's kind of the same, but there are differences. There are different revisions of the same generation of board, I think. So, Ugh, it sucks. All right, but yeah, no parts, no parts are uh, interchangeable between these. So, try to interesting trying to figure out what the mod did. So it's. We would have to basically reverse engineer the ROM and the schematic. I, I don't care. Uh, I'm not concerned about it. The other thing is that there, these drives are all different. So this is a 4040. This is an 8050. The disk formats between the two are completely different. <laughs> so if I was going to guess, I would guess that this makes it emulate a different drive type and that you'd be able to switch between different disk structures. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this thing's ever coming back, unfortunately. It's possible, but you have to recreate every single cable, rewire to the transformer to there. That might be the same, actually. The 
The connections between the transformer and there are probably the same as mine here. So at least there's that. But, yeah. Does that have stock ROMs? They are all MOS brand. I could see a, a read only mode. That would make sense. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna put this back. Cause there's nothing we're gonna do with it now. Mine is fine, thankfully. <laughs> mine, mine works. I did have to replace this felt pad, um, but that's it. Well, yeah. Alright, so reassemble this. Mine is uh, mostly good to go. We might run a cleaning disc through it on both drives first, just to be sure here, though. Alright, isn't the right drive missing his board? Oh, on this. No, so uh, Commodore is weird and cheap here. So, on these drives, they share a control board. I think what they did is they took a double-sided board and they connected two single-sided drives to it. I think that's how it works. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> so yeah, it's one control board for both drives. So it looks like there's something missing on mine too, but this drive still works. <laughs> yeah, Commodore was very weird and cheap. Uh, can the two drives spin independently? I think, but I'm not 100% sure. I think they do, though. All right. So we're going to put the printer on top of here. Which looks okay. These, this is not the printer that's made to be put on top of this. There is a much better uh, top drive printer, um, in my opinion, but this looks pretty good. Can't believe you missed out on the pet episode, 80% of it. If it makes you feel any better, we spent 50% of it just refixing the keyboard for the third time, um, and then spent the remaining part of it putting isopropanol in a printer ribbon cartridge so we could just get this mode to work. So you haven't missed too much. All right, I need that uh, G-pin cable I dropped on the floor. Okay. Now to connect the drive and the printer to each other, to the PET, uh, well actually you may not even realize this. Um, so g is a magical, wonderful um, interface standard. We have one cable coming out of the PET and it's going to the printer. So you might think, oh no, I need another cable. But no, GPIB is a piggybackable, daisy chainable uh, connector standard. So all I need is a standard GPIB cable and I can go from the printer to the floppy drive and connect it that way. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I am in the privileged position because I got these things a long time ago that actually have Commodore branded GPIB cables to go between these two. This is the only one of these I own, um, but I can actually use a Commodore cable to go between my drive and my printer here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hook that up on the back and then plug power into the drive. The drive should work. I've used it before, but you know, time does funny things. So we'll see <laughs> if it still works. Um, and apparently the plug on the drive goes the wrong direction. Thanks, Commodore. Um, printer's correct, though, so I can take it back on that one in the right way. Except I need to fully screw it in so that the threads aren't uh, being blocked. Hold on. Okay, 
and the last power cable we need of the day to get power to the drive. Which made the printer all excited, I guess. All right, drive. Oh, that was powered, okay. Yep, drives are powered. Okay, I'm gonna prepare a cleaning disc here. All right. Uh, you ever fix the dirty brightness pot that's causing flickering? Let's find out. The answer is no. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> so it'll it'll just flicker here. At random. <laughs> yeah, it's been really bad today, actually. Very frustratingly bad. <sighs> hey, at least this is now the easiest way to prep one of these cleaning discs. Done. All right, this goes in, down, come on, get in there, all right. Um, then I need something to cover the top of the window. Where is my blue tape? Okay, let me just, oh, documentation. Ugh, uh, pet manuals. <laughs> Let's see, where is the, there it is. See, can you still get those cleaning discs? Uh, I don't think so. If they, you can, it's dead stock, so. I doubt they're being made. There we are. All right. I love these drives. Uh, now I need to remember how to use these drives. Our manual for how to retain this. <clears throat> oh, I think I don't have it in far enough. Is this one of those dumb ones that clicks in? Oh no, that's gonna be a problem for the cleaning disc. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Ugh. Okay. Uh, is there a length limit to GPIB? Yes. I forget what exactly what it is, um, but it's similar-ish to VGA. All right. Um, so one of the fun things about pets and disk drives is that uh, when you attach a disk drive, it loads new commands for that disk drive um, into DOS. So only with that do we now have the disk commands available. So, ah. let's uh, use the fancier manual here that'll probably cover how to use a disk drive. Um, see, operating CBM computer, blah, blah, blah. Peripherals, okay. Storing magnetic surfaces. Um, I'm going to guess that's cassette and diskette. Okay, 232. All right. It's it's uh, tape drives, disk drives, and printers all in one chapter. Man, uh, Quantex Pentium Pro Tower swap me. Ooh, nice. Let's see, uh, I think we just throw a device not found error. I'm not sure what you mean. Didn't know that. Does it load it from the drive? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you you don't have these commands unless you have the drive plugged in, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Um, one of the fun things here is like you have catalog. I haven't gotten to this point in here. I wish I knew how to spell. Cat catalog is the command. Yeah. So it's trying to access the drive. I have it in one, not zero, and it's not spinning.
Give me that back. Put it in drive zero. There we go. Yeah, now it's trying to catalog it because catalog is the command. And now I think it'll just do that forever. Cool. Uh, you can give it up now. Give me the disc back. Well, I guess that answers that. It does not spin both discs at once. I don't think I got it to try and clean this one. Oh no, there we go. It does spin both. Okay, well, at least this makes it easy to clean. Yeah, the blinking light in the center is amazing. <laughs> there we are. Okay, that should be clean. Uh, we can put a real disc in. That should hopefully make it chill out too. So let me just grab one here. Ugh. All right, we're gonna put in not the one with the software I wrote. Uh, we'll put in the games disc. That way in case it decides to munch it. Oh, it gave up. Oh, well, that'll work too. Okay, here we go. So disc in and down. All right, I'm going to go back up to catalog. Eh? No? You're going to... You're not? I'm not seeing either light blink, though, which is weird. There we go, good as new. Uh, well, here, we can see catalog, it, it's a valid command, okay, with the drive attached. So let's, I'll turn off the computer, unplug the drive, and then you'll see that catalog is not a valid command without a drive attached. Still looking for the uh, thing here. Catalog. Never mind, I'm an idiot. Is that is that really right? Initialize. Syntax error. I think. That's how you do it. Cassette file format. Stop talking about cassettes. Don't care. They're terrible. Okay. This gets. All right. Uh, let's see. 80, 50 drives right on one surface. Summarize. 20, 40 write 35 tracks. 80, 50 write 77. That just absolutely blows my mind. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Give me commands. Give me commands. I don't care about sector nonsense. I mean, I do, but not normally. Okay, D open. Uh, give me the initialization command. Okay, disk repair header. Okay, uh, you cannot take an unused disk and load in the drive. Write data. First disk surface must be prepared. You can prepare disk, erase all data. Uh, disk preparation uh, basic using the header statement. Really? That's so dumb. Okay, yeah, it's not initialize, it's header. Stupid Commodore. Okay. So d does the header command exist? Header. Syntax error. So I don't think header exists without it. Um, but we'll try, try that. Um, so off, plug the drive in. drive on it probably was now it is okay drive on okay header still says syntax there okay I'm just wrong I guess all right it is directory so directory d1 on disk at one I'm gonna try directory Do 
directory. Why is it not trying to read the disk? Directory, please. I'm going to try directory D0 after this. Because this is drive zero. Maybe that'll do it. I don't know. If it works like the other one, it should give up. Actually, I'm probably safe turning this off and on again. That'll be faster. Director. Directory D0. It's out of space. D0. Light? Ah, there we go. Okay. Just needed the D0. That's weird. So, yes, there. We have games. We have a lot of games, actually. Uh, you want to try Looter Lander? It's terrible. <laughs> uh, I think it's D load. Um, how do we do this? What is collect? Collect identifies sectors that have been assigned to data files but are unused. That's awful. All right. Um, duplicating. I don't need to duplicate. Ignore the flickering. It's uh, intentional. Um, word catalog can be used instead of directory. Oh. Uh, copying files. How do I? How do I just open a file? Renaming. Deleting. Sequential data files. I don't care about your weird, complicated stuff. Just show me how to open a file. <coughs> I think I named all of these um, based off of the cassette program names. But yeah, they were terrible. <laughs> really bad. Is it just open? I don't want to accidentally format the disk, so I'm just trying to really be sure here and read the manual. Load file name D0. All right, we'll try that. Load Lunar Lander, comma, D0. Syntax error. Yeah, it might, yeah, I was going to say it might be D load. All right, that might work. Ready. Okay, here we go. Are you ready for Lunar Lander? All right, we're going to play a game on a pet. Okay. Uh, that's not Lunar Lander. That's Tank. Um, what? Okay, I guess we're playing Tank. <laughs> Press return to begin. What skill? I oh, know I suck. One. Still gonna lose. Okay. Oh, you know what? Actually, I remember tank's pretty good. I don't remember how to play though. Um, I think it's multiplayer. Yeah. Okay, this is pretty sweet. Tank is really good, actually. I remember this. Die. Yeah, tank's excellent. Tank's like the only action game. <laughs> Rip keyboard? I don't know what you mean. Keyboard's fine. Oh, it's backing up. <laughs> Another battle? No. Tank was actually good. That was that was nice. No! Uh it apparently only quits if you detect if it detects N. Alright, also randomly generated map, by the way. That's pretty sweet. I think you can cross this, it's just slow. No, never mind. Shift run. Oh. This is your entertainment? You know, I actually loved combat on 2600, so I do think this is genuinely good. This is, pro this is probably the best game we'll see. No. Okay. 
Uh, load. Uh, I wish I had more screen memory here because I don't want to have to type this again. Lunar lander, comma d d zero. What do you mean error? Yeah, it's my fault. D not s load. Uh, nope. Uh, I should learn how to type one of these days. D load, and we'll go ahead and add a space in case it needs it. All right, run. All right. <laughs> I'm so terrible. What's my name? Fred. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, Lunar Lander's really hard and terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, the original Atari flashback NES on the chip back in the early 2000s. You understand? Pre yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I under get, I get it. Okay. All right. So, long story short, uh, the way Lunar Lander works is uh, you're falling, all right? So you have your speed, and then you set how fast you want your engine to work. So I think nine, yeah, is like super duper powerful, uh, but we're burning fuel. So we should really, we, we're scrubbing speed, uh, but we're burning fuel. So we're going to use zero to turn our engine off. Now our speed's going to increase. Now, this is, this is it, okay? This is all we see. We have a spade here that represents the lander as our speed reaches zero. So our goal is to scrub all our speed by the time we reach zero. That's it. This is the game. We are playing the game. Okay, I'm gonna do nine, burn some more fuel here, scrub our speed some, maybe. We'll see if we can scrub all of it. I don't know. It's not looking good. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna die. I think I was, I think I was too late. This is one of those games where once you know where to press the button, uh, you can absolutely just do this one button press and then win. I think we're actually gonna be doing pretty well here. Okay, we're gonna get down to 50. I'm gonna four, okay. Our speed is increasing, all right. We want to make sure our height does not increase, though. So that's fine. I'm going to go to 2, let our speed increase a little more as we get closer to the ground, which, again, we can only tell by looking at this. Yes, this pet does have basic 4. All right, speed's going up a bit. Not thrilled about that. I'm going to bring our speed up to 7, or throttle, I should say. We're getting a little close. I'm going to go full out nine. All right. All right. I'm going to set speed to five, which hovers. Okay, we're hovering. I'm going to slowly go down here. We have, I think we have plenty of fuel. I'm going to go to three, let us drop slightly faster here. When we hit 400, we're going to go to six. Six, then we go to nine. Scrub it all, and uh, that might have been too fast. I think we're going to die. Oh, it's 50 meters per second. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. No, I really don't want to try again. This game is terrible. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. Uh, oh, that's right. This game is actually like really good for just leaving on the computer uh, at like a demonstration because it will loop. 
So we're actually going to have to press stop. <laughs> All right. Directory D0. Uh, you know what? Let's actually run uh, my disk that has my own software on here. So uh, we're going to do this. So these are basic programs that I wrote for the pet. Nothing too fancy, but uh, we can do the same thing here by cheating and going up and then pressing enter again. There we are, and now it's really hard to read, but we have matrix, cur test, and tanks. I guess I copied tanks to this disk because I definitely did not write that. Uh, so we're gonna do matrix. Um, so we'll go down. Deload. I uh, hold on. No, that that was not what I wanted. Stop. Deload. It's very hard to break the habit of the quote mark. Um, list to see how much code. Oh, we can list matrix. You'll like matrix. Matrix. D zero. All right. The best part about matrix is that it is exactly one screen. So there is the source code, and now we can run it. And that's it, that's Matrix. We'll go ahead and stop that uh, and clear. Okay, now we're going to deload. I don't remember what cur test is, uh, so I want to check that out. Cur test. It's probably cursor test of some kind, but I just I don't remember. All right, list. It's not very complicated. Oh, uh, is this going to be the the bounce? Is this what I did for the video? Let's find out. Run. No. I don't know what this is. Maybe this is just demonstrating direct video writing. It must be. Huh. Okay. Matrix pre HDR. Oh, uh, with, yeah, with the remasters or whatever. So, so that's why you're not a phone collector. <laughs> now we send it to the printer. If I knew how, I would, uh, but I don't. I genuinely don't. <laughs> all right. Well, um, we demonstrated all the hardware works. I mean, the pet has some weird flicker issues, but you know everything else works. So at least there's that. Printer's device, it's five comma four, but yeah, but I don't know how to print the screen to it. There's no print screen button, like on DOS, where it just sends the entire screen buffer to memory, or uh, the printer. There's probably a way of reading the cursor, or the, the RAM buffer, directly to the printer, but I don't know how to do it. And I don't want to like look it up or whatever. I mean, unless it says in the printer part of the manual, like just do this command and then print the whole screen. Actually, I don't really want to print that. That's gonna be a lot of ink. There's two, three, two, diskette initialization. It spends 50 pages talking about the cassette drive. Jeez. I'm gonna get to the printer here anytime soon. Formatted printer output. Okay, printing with some or another programming line printer. Uh, okay. This is printering. Okay, I'm at the I'm at the printering section here. Okay. Also, only five minutes? Yeah. Do I have any cassette games? Yes. I have an actual, real cassette game. It's just cassettes are kind of boring. Um, formatted printer output. How can I just print the whole screen? Special printer control characters. Uh, let's 
see. No, ooh, we can do wide printing. That's kind of cool. Uh, I'll try that, Bam Pam. Let, let's see. Uh, let me do. Let me deload Matrix. All right, Matrix. D zero. All right. List. List. All right, and then I will try that command here. Um, so print equals open five comma four because that's what this printer is. Okay, is that a semicolon or colon? Colon. Colon. Oh, oh, okay. Are you sure it's going to be four comma four? Because if I, when I printed text straight to the printer, it was five. But I'll, I'll do that if you think so. Open four comma four. Five is the file number and can be your choice. Oh, that's right. Commodore's dumb. I forgot about that. Uh, C, uh, CMD four. List. Okay. I'm going to bring this back up here for you all to see. We're about to make a hard copy of uh, this. I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little here and just pull out some hopefully still wet ink. Well, civilized world of basic is just lists. It might even be that on here too, but I don't know how to do it. All right, here we go. You didn't like that, apparently. Um. It's not LL list. This is the way. This is terrible. Then. Probably a way of direct printing from a file. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that's not working. The disk drive is connected after the printer. Um, so the printer pretty much has to be working. I'll just uh, remember it doing exactly that in the past. So there's the command. Try hitting return. So I'm not sure what it might be. Yeah, well, I think I got your command correct there. Try just open for return. That just opens it. Close for. Okay. Well, if we're going to do that, Bam Pam, um, let me reprint, open, uh, four comma four, CMD, four, oh, I think it's about to work. I assume that prints the output there, and then, yeah, we'll just list it directly to the printer. So this makes sense. Okay. List. Ah, stupid ribbon. Hold on. I'll do it one more time because we're getting some fresh stuff out. Yeah, I figured that was what command was doing. That makes sense. Man, it's almost like isopropanol evaporates really quick or something. <laughs> that abstraction is really nice. Yeah, you mean being able to just... Oh, yeah, yes, definitely. So, 
it's it's very similar to the HP stuff. The HPs can do that too, um, where you can remap specific devices to something. Uh, so on the HP, it's a little more deliberate. So you can say plotter is 705 as an example. Uh, and what that does is it binds the plotter commands like draw a line uh, to send to the output on uh, GPIB device address five through GPIB controller seven, so 705. Uh, so this, this feels similar to me. So you're saying command goes to device four, but the pet only has one GPIB device. So that makes sense. Uh, that it would go to four here, presumably. So yeah. And yeah, this it's it's really cool. I like this thing. This is nice. <laughs> I like the pet a lot. Um, it's a machine that I would love to have more excuses to use, but man, is it a pain in the butt to maintain. It is such a pain. It's so cool. But uh, I think that's gonna have to be it for today, though. So I'll give you guys. One last wide shot here of the pet. In all its glory, we got everything working today. The printer, the disk drive. Uh, we didn't mess with the data set, but the data set always works. That's that's not a problem. But yeah, we can print and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Just like real pets, yeah, really. But yeah, very, very happy to dig this out again, get it going, and to have the stupid, um, annoying maybe the keyboard's fixed for a while i don't know now uh, i i didn't graphite all the pads last time this time i kind of did i just didn't do that and e is a pain in the butt i guess for some reason but yeah uh man really fun to dig this out and play with it though so okay same font as a vic 20 weird <laughs> it must just be presented very differently or sucks uh, over RF because I don't get that vibe at all. <laughs> have graphite dust in the modern controls now? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but all right, we're gonna have to call it there. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun after the hours of agonizing over it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out a way of preparing printer ribbons because that's super annoying. <laughs> Uh, do I do other Commodore stuff? Not a ton. I own pets, or pets. Uh, I own 64s and a VIC-20, or two VIC-20s. Uh, we do need to finish repairing one. I actually have parts to fix the other one now. I can get my uh, VIC-20 going again. I need to get my original VIC chip back after verifying the new one works. Um, not that it really matters. I, mean, I just won't worry about it. But uh, yeah, we need to get my original VIC-20 working again, but I have two um, C64s are all broken, just like every single one of them in existence is. So, yeah, not gonna mess with that. That uh, shut everything down here. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to have like feature complete Commodore Pet. Like it, can, it can do all the things now. You can, you can do full. Like I consider this to like office version of touring complete so like you can use software you can save software and you can output data those are the three things that you really need so getting that printer it just absolutely completed that oh man that's so nice that's awesome i'm very excited oh man how about recapping a game gear i need to cap map it first that's that's the pain in the butt part because they're weird still need to do that Tape drive? Yeah, tape drive. It's right here. There you go. There's a data set. Tape drive sucks. <laughs> I don't know to tell you. Tape drive is annoying. Can I add Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet? No. I don't like to resto mod computers like that. I like to use them as is. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it as is. I'm very, very happy with it as is. Actually, if we hadn't got to... If the keyboard hadn't been such a huge pain, uh, it was my intention to try and set up CBM link or something like that with a modern computer, try and transfer files over, because the way I got everything onto this was through the data set, which is terrible. Um, I do have a cheat um, in here that I use somewhat. So this is, I forget exactly what this is, but this was sent to me. Um, and it allows you to connect a line input device, like a phone, um, okay? 
my phone still has a headphone port so you plug that in there all right and then you can load tap files directly in through this and it works great um so yeah that's one way to do it uh, i keep it in here as like a reminder like hey don't actually use the data set but you know when you pull it out you want it to look fancy put that in instead um yeah so that's how i got all the software into here actually i think everything that was on that games disc i used a uh car audio cassette adapter and that was a nightmare but yeah so see the portrait black data set is more authentic match to the pet i mean it is if you can find one <laughs> they're not easy to find though <laughs> so that's that's good enough it's at least vic 20 pet colored instead of commodore 64 colored so that's a win enough so yeah Tried tap dancer with C64 with car audio adapters. It does work. It's just very picky. It's very picky. So, uh, so uh, uses a terminal for Linux. Oh no, 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 no. But, uh, all right, we're gonna wrap it up there. So uh, I'm gonna run the outro and all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, this is why I leave this connected because um, I, now I need to do that. You have three, three of the pet ones, that's that's a lot. <laughs> All right, outro time, boom. All right, um, thank you all for being here. We This was uh, this was a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be. I really thought that today we're just gonna have fun with the thing, but nope, Commodore stuff's always gotta be unreliable somehow. Pet, it's always the keyboard. Every single time without fail, the keyboard's terrible, so yeah but uh yeah so uh yep that's it if you guys enjoyed this stream you may want to follow to be notified when i go live again next which will be next friday we're done with the really inconsistent stream schedule we'll be back to business normal now um if you want to help support the channel you can get a shirt like this one or find me on patreon but for now that's it and i will see you next time you're supposed to click the print out button why is it not working Ah, there we go.